Welcome to Painkiller Already, episode 206. Kyle, take it away with an ad read. We've got one of our favorite sponsors tonight. we got Dollar Shave Club. So is there anything worse than buying razors? Fighting traffic at the store, dealing with that locked plastic razor fortress. After all that, it's going to set you back over $25. So be done with that hassle forever and join DollarShaveClub.com. For a few bucks a month, DollarShaveClub.com delivers great razors and shave supplies right to your door. Plans start at just $3 per month, and signing up takes two minutes. There's no membership fees and no commitment, plus they have a money-back guarantee. So you really have nothing to lose. Stop trudging to the store for overpriced razors and join dollarshaveclub.com slash PKA. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash PKA. Dollarshaveclub.com is freaking awesome. I, I like the way they advertise. They're hilarious, and their product is top-notch. I'll tell you the truth. Sometimes I use Dollar Shave Club razors and get a proper shave and sometimes i use an electric shaver like in the car when i'm on the run or something and you can tell because i am 12 maybe 17 percent sexier when i use dollar shave club stuff and i get compliments on my live streams hmm. they say woody you look wow. younger and more handsome and your gray hair is gone yeah dollar shave club. <laughs> it, it makes they your say, gray hair go away yeah they do it does and they say woody did you get more money and i'm like no it was just dollar shave club i look richer <laughs> 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 They asked me something like, Woody, where'd you get that nice shirt? I said, I wear this shirt all the time, but I have a proper shave. It's uh, everything about you becomes a little better. My wife is like, is that a new technique? I'm like, no, dollarshaveclub.com <laughs> slash PKA. Yeah. <laughs> any facet of your life that has not been improved by dollarshaveclub.com. All of them. My tires on my car do not wear as quickly when I have shaven with Dollar Shave Club. I can't explain it, but yeah. It's incredible product. Incredible product. And one wife, Charlie's legit, legit. Yeah, those are cool. In all seriousness, go check, go check, go check them out, guys. They've got a cool website. They've, I really like their marketing strategy, the way they advertise. Speaking of the way they advertise, you know, like us, mm -hmm. uh, stuff like this right here. So um, buy the one wife, Charlie's with your kit. Just try it. If you're wiping your what is, rear, is the one wife, Charlie, uh, like a wet wipe. <laughs> Yes, the, a it manly is. wet wipe. It's a manly wet. It's wipe. a manly. You should see it. I, I I don't know that you possess the strength to tear apart a one wipe, Charlie. And, no one and does. If you're if you're, let me tell you, Americans out here, some of you don't have clean butts. You don't. You mm -hmm. if I got poop on your forearm and then just wiped it with a dry piece of paper, you wouldn't be like, all right. Good to go. Good to go. <laughs> no, but you do that with your butt, and you're just <laughs> in a silent denial about it. There's a group denial that you're all walking around with dirty butts. Not me, sir. Not me. I've got a clean butt. It's been wet wiped. You no. could, you could you eat be off my rear. You want to be walking around feeling fresh. <laughs> yeah, you want to have a nice clean butthole, and you want it to have the strength that One Wipe Charlie's does. Have you ever buy the discounted wet wipes where you accidentally finger pop your own asshole as you're trying to wipe? Because it just tears. It tears like a you. <laughs> it's, it tears. It's, it's, it's not a durability for Hulk Hogan could wipe your ass for it, and you would have no of uh, you know fingernails, any sort of big hand tubes sliding up there. You know, you just gotta. <laughs> and it says right on the package them. that it's flushable. So, um, uh, one wipe, Charlie, uh, DollarShaveClub.com, that's PKA. Uh, check that stuff out. Annotation links in the description, all that fun stuff. Um, mm -hmm. It gets the and PKA. before you say they're not flushable, they are flushable. You just have to flush one at a time. You can't be going gung ho. It's like using a, a super strong paper towel to wipe your ass in moments of need. You know, when you're like shit. It's either this or napkins, and napkins aren't you know sturdy enough. Mm -mm. My one wipe Charlie technique is this: flush one at a time, and you're fine. So I start with an open one wipe Charlie and wipe. And you don't have to fold it all up like you do toilet paper because, like I said, it's strong. Fold it in half, put the dirty on the inside, wipe it again. Fold it in half. You do that maybe by the third time. And uh, No, I think I think most of the listeners know how to wipe their ass, but this is an excellent way to do so. <laughs> <laughs> definitely purchase I'm this. pretty sure that most of them have that down, Woody, but maybe yeah. adding <laughs> Woody's like to the regimen. No, I, I think you'd be surprised. Inside. A lot of people just ball it up, wipe, and toss. But if you have a wet wipe, I think you want to wipe, fold, fold, and, and get your mileage out of it. Wastrels. Yeah, you know what? Uh, we're wearing these berets right now, or at least me and Kyle are. And I'm not appreciating how much he looks like, you know, a member of the SAS, and I look like a paper boy in 1918. <laughs> <laughs> I told you how to put it on. I, it's because my head's too big. It, it can't handle my girth. I was oh, gonna, that's what it is. I was going to do my unboxing on air. Would, would you guys like to do that now? Is that an interesting um, thing? 
I would, and then I've got some very self-serving topics after that. So let's do this. Ooh. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'd like to and, do and by the way, Jackie brought me dessert. Let me put myself on the oh, big yeah. screen. Oh, hey, yeah. Let, me, let so me put you on the big screen. Let's the see. consumption of this... Oh. Ah, shit. Is going, <laughs> is going to happen on the show. I was trying to show you guys. I and uh, um, you'll just have to cope. I'll do my best to keep food sounds away from the mic, but I haven't eaten in a long time, Jackie. Maybe. So is that strawberry shortcake with chocolate? Syrup? Strawberry shortcake. It has like uh, chocolate sauce, whipped cream, and then there's like cake in the middle, which wasn't properly captured. But yeah, it's in there. Anyway, okay. let's, what's in this box? So, so yeah, Microsoft. What's in the box? I what's guess in that box? Microsoft is doing some kind of sponsorship for us now, and everyone else dove straight into their box except me because um, I really like my sponsorships in money form and had I was just less excited than everybody else. <laughs> All right, so there's a basket. And sample all of the food as you as you pull it out and give us a review of that. Open that basket with your bare hands. That's what I want to say. Um, or maybe you're just good at untying knots. This you opened it like a heathen. You just tore it open, Kyle. You couldn't get the knot. <laughs> I, oh. I was wearing a knife at the time, so it just seemed. Oh. I, I basically <laughs> grabbed the top. I grabbed the top of the bag and then I scalped it. <laughs> I'm with Kyle. Right, let me see. If this doesn't open easily, I've, I've got a knife on me too. Oh, it does though. All right. Enjoy that sound, so the bag. You got your flag there? Let's, let's just see that. Okay. This is my um, my French flag. Aha! Uh -huh. It's an Assassin's Creed thing. That's why it's all... I guess the next Assassin's Creed... Is it French Revolution, did you say? Yeah. Assassin's Creed. Uh, it must be. Um, oh, no. Oh, it's okay. I thought I put my hat in my strawberry shortcake, which would suck. Um, I have... Crepe mix, I guess? Mm -hmm. Stonewall Kitchen yeah. crepe mix? So I'll be getting you some... Like a you should get Jackie to make those for you. Those are awesome. Oh, that'll happen. Dip your finger in the crepe mix. Tell us how it is. <laughs> These are apricot preserves. Apricot preserves. Got, wait, I got strawberry. Oh, I got strawberry. You got hosed, Woody. Uh, hmm. I'm actually okay with apricot preserves. I'm, I'm good with those. I disagree with your hose thing. What um, is that? This is mustard, and it's written in cursive, so you know it's good. Grape upon. Mm -hmm. Is it literally? No, it's yeah. not. It's... Yeah. Bottled by Jean-Claude de Mustard himself. <laughs> All right. And um, we got nine grand gallets. I hope that these are cookies. I don't, I don't know exactly what they we're having. You should, ha you should try one of those. Throw it in that strawberry shortcake. You might as well. I accept your terms. Oh, did you get those kind of cookies too, Kyle? Yeah. Because I got different ones. I haven't I had ones with chocolate Although, on them. Woody signed Kitty up for a cookie of the month club, and it's Snickerdoodle this month. <laughs> and I've had Ooh. a real mini toasts um, an Xbox something slice into the French Revolution with Xbox One I don't know if you guys can read that um, we're almost done here these are no oh, this is interesting pecans is this a chocolate a candy alright I'm down for that and then um, this is probably a not a cigar yeah this is sausage. Take a big oh. bite of that sausage. I don't bite it. Fuck. Yeah, bite into it. It'll complement your strawberry shortcake well. <laughs> I don't think that you make a lousy. What are the wine people called that recommend stuff? A wine connoisseur. No, there's a name for them at restaurants. It's a particular kind of job oh. that will like. You don't. You don't know it either. Mm mm. Fuck. Mm. Uh, I don't like wine. This is my I don't uh, either. money clip, by the way. It has a knife built into it. It's kind of cool. You gotta drink it a lot to acquire the taste, and I've lost that. Just seems like a lot of effort to get to like it. When I can just go to a restaurant and order something cheap, and I don't know the difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does your sausage have a bunch of white shit all over it? Because <laughs> mine did. <laughs> That's mold, and it's not supposed to be there. Oh, look! So I'm supposed to bite this? Mm. Yes. See, yours has white shit on it. That's, a, I guess, the French way of preparing it. Jesus Christ. Oh. He is not going to enjoy that. Now, to savor it. At least <laughs> 30 chews, and then give us a review. What's the mouth feel like? Be thinking of it. <laughs> oh, Every bite brings another flavor in, 
and they're not all good <laughs> ones. Like, <coughs> I, at first I was like, I don't know, this isn't, well, it just got spicier. I it's, have an idea. I have an idea. May I? Dip it in the mustard. Yes, that actually might make it better. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I want to do it. All right. The nice how, mild how taste of the sausage will be complimented. How, how terrible is it that we're making him do this and we each have identical baskets? Yeah. All right. Well, I don't like mustard, and that sausage is gross. You think he so. likes this? No, yeah, but he's, he's doing okay. it. He's over, yeah, he was hungry. <laughs> That's why he's eating this instead of his strawberry shortcake. Yeah. He was hungry. <laughs> he wanted some sustenance before his dessert. How is it? So it... At first, I thought it was chewy. <laughs> But I think that there are hints of slime ball in there. So there's kind of a like a, a squishy kind of splash out texture going on. Ooh. Pustules. If Is you it will. just a little bit oily? <laughs> just a little bit? Egg sacks. <laughs> yeah. When so I when opened I it, it, I thought like, it maybe some larva. looked like something they would give World War I soldiers as like rations. <sighs> It's like, like enough like salt to keep it fine for the five-year trench war. I'll, I'll have a bite, and I'll be like, oh, it's kind of like a meat. And then, it, like, salt explodes out the sides <laughs> or something. And I'm like, oh, it's a salty thing going on here. And then the pustules of, like, tofu or something burst out. And then it's like, oh, it got spicy. It's darn near hot. And what? Really? I Let it, me go get mine. I have to It know. is a cornucopia of flavors in my mouth I, right now. I have to know. A lot of flavors, each worse than the last. <laughs> Two thumbs down to Xbox Live's <laughs> Meat Choice crew. If only I had more thumbs for, from which to yeah. down. Uh, yeah, multiple thumbs down to that. Mm -hmm. Unless they want to send me more stuff, in which case just fill the next box with the cookies, please. <laughs> were the cookies good? Uh, my cookies were, you guys got some different ones. Mine had a little bit of chocolate, as the French say, on there. Hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Major Nelson, you are no Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wait, wait. That would have been pretty gross if we sent you a cheesecake. Or whatever the hell you're eating. Is there something else in there? Oh, uh, where's your beret? You haven't shown it yet. That's what I'm on. That's what I'm on to. So, I think... I'll just turn the speaker up a touch so I can hear you guys. What a yeah, crime. Yeah, there's no right way to wear it. Look at this hair. What a crime this is going to be. All right. As soon as you don it, you start wanting to wear po or write poetry and get all angsty at adults and authority figures. Or deliver papers to all nice. the people we in Brooklyn. Wow. Wow. I I it it gives me like a Jufro effect. <laughs> Is that bad to say? I don't, I don't think so. No. All right, I'm going for. Kyle, did you get your sausage? I was thought I thought maybe I could just dip the toast in the the, ja the jam. I thought that would be more fun. Do I? Oh, have? you thought that'd be more fun. So look. And of course, it. you go for the worst thing to eat on microphone again: the mini toasts made of sand and gravel. They're awful. Okay. Have I pulled off the crooked condom tip look that I was going for? Oh, very nice. You look like Jean-Claude Van Damme in, like, uh, what's that movie? Um, the fighting movie based on the video game. Anyway. Oh, the, the fighting Street movie Jean-Claude Van Damme. Uh, hmm. Based on the video game. <laughs> I like Taylor Street Sarkasm. Fighter. It's a Street there. Fighter movie. Street Fighter. Ah. Handmade made with precision. This is Olympic provisions since 2009, so you know it's good. Uh, this has been dry cured. It is a French brand salami with garlic, and that's what it is, Woody. It's garlic in there, and black pepper. Not a fan. Of the There's... sausage or of garlic? I, I don't Whatever the egg pustules were in there. Garlic. Do you think it was that's... garlic? Yeah. Hmm. The, yeah, they put, there was too much garlic. Altogether too much garlic, and the black pepper just brought out how bad the too much garlic was. I think the garlic fights off the rot. <laughs> That's Not that effectively, because it's covered that with kills, white shit. That kills the bugs. <laughs> oh, look, oh, this is much grosser in person, I promise. <laughs> yeah, it, it's white. Oh, th is that mold like on the a... surface? Just eat it. No, that's what I thought. Uh, just eat it. 
I'm licking it, trying Don't to like, lick it. I, I licked it. I wanted to identify like what that surface texture because it, it scratches Kyle. off. Like, Blow yeah, it. Me... You know you want to take a I'm bite. Absolutely not an inch and a half in. Late. I'm not gonna fillet this French sausage. I promise you, it won't become not a gift. <laughs> right? <laughs> no one will make so, a like... gift out of you blowing that. So like, if you there's a bit of white here. So like, watch this. Like, yeah, take it that deep. That scrapes off. Put like, it in your mouth that deep. Like, yeah. Here, scrape no. some off and just see what it tastes like. You fucking weirdo. No. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna. I don't want to bite that in. The fans part. want it. If oh, this like, was a live stream and I said, "Would you like Kyle to fillet this?" There'd be yeses all so like, down the side. That's what wow. The interior looks that's like. it. Yeah. Looks like the inside of an animal's limb when you're skinning it. Yeah. Awful. Now savor and describe. Hmm. Excellent radio. <laughs> yeah, you have a gift for this, Kyle. <laughs> it's meaty. Okay, it's meaty. It's a little slimy. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't appear to be fully cooked. Uh, it looks a bit like ground beef wrapped in a meat hose. And... Um, it's not that bad though. The garlic and the black pepper, I can definitely taste both. Um, I think maybe like if you were like this would make good like survival food. Like maybe you could throw this in your car. I mean, it's already all white and moldy, and it's still pretty good. So what, what's the worst that could happen? Yo, dog, I heard you yeah. like hats, so I put a hat on my hat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like if this got like some like rainwater on it, it could only improve. So rainwater? Why rainwater? You know, if it's like survival, you just throw it in the back of your truck or something. Like anything, not the best sausage. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go purchase. Your survival that. strategy is to throw semi-good meat in the back of your truck and wait. <laughs> it seems dubious. <laughs> at quite the prepper. It's, it's a pretty lazy scenario. <laughs> this is gonna pay dividends. I admit. Look at these <laughs> tiny, tiny toasts. He's gonna survive till dinner time with that strategy. Yeah. Look at these <laughs> tiny little toast things. I want to. Look at that. That's pretty cool. I'm mm. going to try this jam. Gonna try it's it. an oddly shaped crouton. Don't believe their lies. We're going to find out if it's a crouton. I don't know. It does look like a crouton. I'm putting strawberry oh, going into seconds. It must be good. on a cracker or a cookie here. It's really fucking good. Well... Hmm. Are those mini toasts from France? Yes, they are, and they are delicious. Authentic mini toasts. So, I wonder what yeah, those I... are actually supposed to be for. Um, well, I don't surrender know. sandwiches. <laughs> They're perfect for entertaining, delicious with uh, cheese and pate. I don't know. Ooh. I think um, I think I might like this gift basket more than my Xbox One. Wow. <laughs> wow. And That's uh, not what true. is that? Have you even tried your Xbox One yet? Uh, I haven't hooked it up yet because I was kind of going to... I don't know. I was waiting on everyone else to get theirs out so we could play together. I want to play uh, Assassin's Creed. And I definitely want to play um, the Halo thing. This candy mm -hmm. bar looks really interesting. Pretty excited about this if I figure out how to unwrap it. Okay, well, I, I, was, I wanted this to be like a sample some food from the basket, not watch Kyle eat all of the contents of this basket. <laughs> well, you could eat some food, too, if you want, but I'm not going to slow down. Um, <laughs> should we do our new... I, I wanted to cover the um, Slaps the Soul topic. Are you guys down for that? Yes, I'm down. All right. So I'm thinking we'll watch the two-minute video, and then I have a view video, which is a couple minutes, too, and I'd love to watch both. Could you link us to the slap cool. video? And yes. the slap video, you won't be able to understand anything they're saying anyway. Yeah, so you can talk, so we can over, talk it. over it. <laughs> um, you don't have to feel like you're listening to us watch a video, which is what you're doing. Okay, okay. So I have um. This is the second. Don't don't go to this one yet. I wanted to like save your reactions, but that's the second video that we'll watch after the first. So there's a two piece little section here. Are are okay. you guys ready? Mm-hmm. I'm ready. All right. So 
Uh, this is the first video. What you're going to see is a woman picking on a man and then he strikes back. Ready, set, play. All right, so they're in a subway car, it appears, and this guy has a goofy, you know, wilderness survival rabbit hat. He's just standing there holding the pole. He's like a foot taller than everyone. He's and this six foot six. Is up in his He's a bouncer with a speech this guy impediment. Really is a and this woman is tearing him to shreds verbally, and he's just kind of looking at her and laughing along. Yeah. And, and she's so excited. She's like bouncing around jubilantly. And all of her friends are laughing. Yeah. Oh, now that it's the camera person who is filming, and they're coming a little bit boisterously at them. And not one, but three camera. of the women, like, three of these women, like, thought it was appropriate to, like, swing at the guy holding the camera. Yeah. And then they're all, They came out like, with smiles on their faces, like, I'm immune, I know I'm immune. They flapped the camera around Can we do a pause? Ready, set, pause. Yep. So... Yep. They're all sort of laughing and having fun, but they're also hitting and genuinely, like, insulting and hurting feelings. Like, they, they're taking it too far where they're the only people having a good time. They're, I don't know what to call them, cheerful bullies? I mean, just, just look at everybody else on the train. They're all incredibly uncomfortable. Yeah, everyone just, else on the these train. These people are ruining everybody else's day by being loud and annoying just inconsiderate, yelling at this dude for no reason. The guy, I don't, I don't know if something happened before the video started, mm -hmm. but that dude was just standing there, and she was up, you know, <laughs> legs spread, shoulder width, like berating him like a drill instructor. Yeah, and, and then laughing uh, even at as they're running jokes. the camera guy to slap him out of his hand, even as they're slapping the camera out of the, the guy's hand, a uh, different guy than the very tall guy, mind you, uh, who's filming from behind. They, they're smiling while they smack it out of his hand. Like, you can't do shit. I can just do this. I can just act like this. Like an insolent child in mm -hmm. daycare, just snatching Legos from another child. It's just who, no, bad parenting. All right, are you mm -hmm. guys ready? Yep. Ready, set, play. I don't do it. I don't do it. When you get mad. You sound stupid. You dirty, bitch. You sound... Damn. So she hit him. She hit him with a cheese. Oh, and he slapped the fuck out of her. His arms are so long. And now a dude jumps in. Yeah. Okay, now he beats yeah. the crap out of the dude, too. It's amazing. Yeah, this is good for this guy. Okay, so basically, this lady, he called her a bitch. She smacked at him. He turns around, gives a haymaker of a slap that just resonates throughout the train. Just it, whack. And, so then some white and then a bunch of asshole guys jumps in as it's like, her rescue. <laughs> like, you can't hit a woman? Yeah. But no, she hit first. You know how you can, like, combo attacks against multiple enemies in video games where you just like, dart back and forth between them? He, like, landed the start of the combo on her face, and then when all the white knights came in, he just started jumping back and forth to different parts of the car, beating the shit out of these guys. And one of the guys, you can see, felt really confident because he had two of his friends jumping up behind him like, yeah, we're going to save this woman's honor. And immediately, <laughs> those two guys saw what was going down, and they're like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and leave. And so the other <laughs> dude just got hammered. Yeah. Excellent. Top notch. I, Good for that guy. Now, the guy hit a lot harder than he was hit, but to me, he like... Fucking stiletto. She hit him with a shoe. That's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. He he was cut and stuff. You, like, it's, it's felony assault. You can't do that. She, she was filed. I, I know how this ends. So, um, uh, but anyway, yeah, she she hit him with a shoe, which I couldn't see. It seemed like a smack when I watched it, but I've read uh, like many articles about this. And she hit him with a, a stiletto shoe, which is like a real high heel, like a pointy high heeled shoe. And um, uh, then they talked about it on The View. If you don't know The View, it's this American talk show. It's a bunch of women. And, and oftentimes it takes a really, really pro-woman stance. So uh, you would expect them to say, never hit a girl, right? There's no situation in which you can hit a girl. And a lot of people stick by that. But let, let's watch The View thing. So do you guys have it queued up? Um, I, uh, I don't. Yes, it, I do now. Everyone get excited. We're about to watch The View. <laughs> it's only three minutes, but but you get to hear them discuss it. Are you guys ready now? Sure. Oh, okay. Ready, set, play. All right, speaking of that, there's a new viral video of another subway brawl here Whoopi in Goldberg New York City on the heels today. of last week's fight that blew up <laughs> on YouTube and led to four arrests. Take a look. Now they're just playing the same video again. This doesn't last long. 
just slapped her so fucking hard. Yeah. yeah. God, what a great slap. Wow. He slapped the living he, yes, he daylights did. out yes, of he did. every opening moment of her. Yes, Whoop. well, see, and <laughs> keep your tweets to yourself because I'm about to piss you off. Uh-oh. Okay? Go whoopee. If you slap Ooh, whoopee. anybody, but particularly women, if you slap, put your hands on somebody, you cannot be guaranteed that he's not going to slap the out of you. Okay? That is and so true. That whole, I know. Ooh. I know a lot of people feel like, oh, no, a man should never hit a woman. This is why you have to get checked. Because she was, these girls were sitting on that train yes. messing with him. Yeah, haggling with like him. Just, yeah. You know I, Go ahead. When I first heard Poke. you make that Were you comment, poking I got, him? I got very Were you fucking with I it? I felt like it was given license for men to go ahead and attack women. And I do believe that men should leave. Is that what you but thought? I felt a little hypocritical when I saw this. I was like, okay. She needed to get slapped back she definitely because needed to get slapped. it was it was she really attacked this man and and the thing is is that men I don't think you should ever hit women you know but I think women wake up if you slap someone you might get slapped back. There you absolutely. go. Absolutely. absolutely, I'm a strong woman. I'm trying to fight the I've mouthed off quite a few times here and there, but when you go and you slap a man, that's. You know, and all bets you off. slap him in you the hopes run. that he's not going to slap <laughs> yeah, you back. Exactly. But as how many I always say, you, you don't know how he was raised. Right. Uh, you have no idea. Never. So you take I've your... I've never been hit by a woman your, like that. Pause it for a second, though. In your hands. Did you say pause it? When you do that. Yeah, we should now, pause we don't want you slapping say, anybody. Ready, set, pause. So did you, the, the kind of cute woman with the black hair over there, did you hear what she was saying in response to it? Like, I'm a strong woman. I'm feisty. I let my mouth run. And then nobody stopped her or said anything. People had a little trickling of applause. Like, is that what it's seen to be a strong woman? To be right? mouthy and to to be negative, to be a problem in public? Because I think there's a big deal. Like, if you're actually a strong person, you don't have to go around telling people about it. You know what a you strong woman is? You don't have to go around being like, is... I'm tall. I'm tall. Like, no, you just, you just exist and you exude that naturally. You don't have to run your mouth and compensate for it. A strong woman will develop an expertise in something, right? Be so good at something that you're viewed as an expert in that field. A strong woman will develop deep knowledge and have defensible positions. A strong woman can be a leader, right? Where, where people want to follow her based on what she has to offer on that subject matter. That, to me, is what makes a strong woman. Not someone who's just overly sassy and kind of argumentative and fighting. That's just that's I was gonna use the B word right like it if I was a guy who was just argumentative and like they'd call me a jerk or an asshole like Woody always fucking fights Woody's always pushing back no matter what the topic is his opinion is the only right one that wouldn't go over well but that's somehow what she defines as a strong woman no 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 if you want to be strong be an expert in a field and then you can be strong at that you know be, be someone who other people look up to as someone worth following at that thing that that to me is what's cool. You can there's strong women in politics, there's strong women in industry, there's strong women all over the place. But they're not strong because they're like sassy and finger wagging, which is how I thought she was describing herself. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. Hmm. Do you totally want to watch agree. the rest Kyle, of this? There's the worst, the worst way to try to be a strong woman is by beating up grown men because it won't usually end well. <sighs> yeah. I, I, I think we've talked about this you before. I, I, I fear repeating myself, which is something I rarely ever do. <laughs> but um, I feel like some women don't know. They're not fully aware of the strength difference between an average guy and girl. It, it, is, it is bigger than you might guess. Um, don't hit That was guys, even worse because the strength difference between that guy and a regular guy was huge. Yeah. And so maybe dipping two levels down to a small woman and that big guy, it's like, I bet that slap just rang in her ears the whole way home. Perhaps a physical oh, competition excellent. between you and your wife would be the west, best way to display this difference. <laughs> Should I arm wrestle Jackie? Yes. Arm wrestling. I'd like to see arm wrestling. I'd like yes. to see, like, um, maybe you get something that you, she can't even lift and, and, like, you lift it above your head, like, three times. And you say, okay, how many can you do? And she's like, Arr! Like, drops it on her head and cracks her skull open. Here's a thing that I can describe with Jackie. When it's time to move something really heavy, I'm better off not asking for help. You know, if it's bulky and I can handle it, but it's easier with two people, I'll bring her in. If it's really on the limits of what I can carry, because I am more than twice as strong as her, she can't carry her side. 
You know, unless it's one of those things where one side has, you know, 80% of the weight. I, if it's like a, let's say I'm carrying a, a 52 inch plasma TV, right? Maybe that's just, I don't know, I don't know how heavy that is. A dresser. I'm better off trying to move this thing alone than going 50 50 with Jackie. It's. That's, that's true with a lot of stuff, though. Like, not even just chicks. Like, have you ever had. When you're moving a couch, one person on either end, and there's that third person who's kind of in the middle, just getting in the way of doorways and not <laughs> yeah. really helping lift. Yeah, and right. Just kind of yeah. In like, the dude, fucking way, because they're like, I want to be a part of the team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Jeremy. Jeremy's the guy who wants to get in the middle and coordinate and shit. We had to move like an industrial bandsaw out of this old warehouse building one time. The thing weighed 1,200 pounds. It had to go up an old freight elevator and then into a back of a truck where there was a height difference of like a 18 inches. We were dripping with sweat by the time we got done, everyone except for Jeremy. Because <laughs> he just kind of like sat in the middle and was like, like, gave directions like, yeah, look at real good right over here, like about a quarter inch, blah, 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 a quarter inch. <laughs> a quarter inch yeah, of blah, blah? <laughs> 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 what? Uh, Backseat movers. Okay, so now that we have talked about that women's physical weakness, again... Get that out of the way. Do we? Is there any more to the view uh, uh, segment there that we? There should, was uh, more. I actually just closed it. I could open it again, but I, I think the core huh. of it was I was surprised to see the view line up with this guy. Oh, the end of the story for people that don't know it. Um, they pressed a bunch of charges uh, out of the gate. The guy got felony assault. The girl got felony assault, and the woman that hit the camera got misdemeanor assault. And then, as of now, as we record this, it's Thursday. They dropped all the charges against the guy and said it was self-defense. And um, I wonder if she hadn't hit him with the shoe, if she had just slapped him, how that would have gone down. But as it is now, that woman is up against felony assault. The guy is off scot-free, and the other woman still has misdemeanor assault. Uh, yeah, if she didn't use a weapon, it wouldn't have gone down nearly the same way. But yeah. I do, you know, I have to give a little kudos to the view. I, I never watch it, but I can see how I, you know, they would usually take the opposing stance to that. But Whoopi was right. You know, I you, feel like. Just, you can't just go out and fuck with people for no reason and expect not. Yeah, the fact, at, at some point insane. you've become you've become a danger, and I, I'm just not gonna take it anymore. Like like I wouldn't let a swarm of bees continually sting me. I'd get out of the way, and if I can't get away, I'm gonna start swatting. The like, fastest growing subreddit last week, and it might be because we talked about it. Like I bet that played a role, <laughs> but it's pussy pass denied, and it's kind of like justice porn. It's it's basically women misbehaving thinking that they have their pussy pass, which allows them to get away with their bad behavior. Like, May I just say I don't like the name of the yeah, uh, of the I don't like the name. It seems, it seems it's, like it's too aggressive to get a yeah, meaning very out. You know? I don't like yeah, that. Right? Too aggressive. It, 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 I have a hard time getting joy from the subreddit because I don't want to be that misogynistic. If people don't know what that no, word I'll means, just, it's like anti-female. justice porn. Justice yeah. porn's already good. So this, this is, is like justice, justice porn, porn, but it's all women. It's all women using their pussy pass. This this idea that they can hit guys or mouth off or do things without any kind of reprisal. And it's it's never guys hating women for talking too much. It, it it's usually guys hating women for hitting them first, and uh, or sometimes it's guys like aggressively winning an argument when the girl aggressively started an argument, like like that kind of thing. And yeah, uh, I can see the other be some good ones on there, but at the same time, it's like. When you just get echo chambers in those forums in places like that that are already like they're so pointed towards one goal or one type of content, like mm -hmm. they're gonna get way too extreme, way too fast. Which it sounds like they already are, based on the name a little bit. Pussy pass in it. Yeah, I, yeah. I wish it was called like female justice porn. But in any case, a lot of those videos are fun to watch because they are basically justice porn. It's just women, and sometimes a uh, uh, sometimes a, a female antagonist can be even more frustrating than a male one mm. because. Because, just because of the situation, just just like that lady in that last video, she was just so grating and annoying, and she was just in his face, and she was enjoying it so much. Her, you, yeah. mean spirited. Her personal celebrations made it twice as bad. Like the things that she said on a scale of one to ten were just about a ten. But then her little victory dances on how she's just completely tearing this guy down added to it a lot in and my she's own got her cheerleaders over there like mm -hmm. laughing at every joke and stuff and it's just like am i in high school again motherfucker yeah. 
I will just... fuck you up. Like, mm. like my arms are eight feet long, apparently. Like, when he <laughs> slapped her from a different car. Like, no. he was... That, I didn't even... I don't even... It looked like a... It didn't even look real. He Dude, slapped her from so far I could away. see that slap coming from the third row. I don't know what is up with her boxing defense, but <laughs> he was, like... He's like, wah! And he takes this, like, eight-foot wingspan condor arm... And it just comes with it. And it wasn't like a slap horizontal. This thing had a vertical element to it. And he comes slapping down on her face. And Big I'm like, overhead you, right. you didn't see that coming? What is wrong with you, woman? But she it, saw it coming, but it was like an yeah, asteroid. Was, there's no getting away from that. She was a deer in the headlights or something. Because he, he telegraphed that thing to no end. And it landed yeah. perfectly. It, it, also, very impressive how the slap made an action perfectly with the hand on the face. I would have thought he would have maybe overcorrected or undercorrected, like hit her with the, you know, like <laughs> or just kind of given him like a, that kind of thing, like a cat paw scratch. But no, just work. And, and, and then right you know what else I that. noticed on that? How in sync the audio was. Like I don't know if you've ever watched porn and and you, like you get a slap on the ass and it's like, right, the sound comes <laughs> later and, and and all it's doing is proving it. it's like a clapboard where the audio is out of sync. And uh, you don't really notice it on the moan so much, but you get a pat on the ass, and you're like, ah, there's a quarter second delay on this thing. And uh, but not on this video. I like their compliment. Their audio was perfectly in sync, as shown by the facial clapboard. Kudos. Very very. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that was. Good. I'm glad he slapped that lady. She needed a slapping. She did. Yeah. All right, so Kim Kardashian um, released some photos this week. She she did a thing for, uh, what is this, Paper Mag? PaperMag.com, that's where they are. Um, so let me link you guys. It's a huge These, break, Paper Mag. Um, I think so. I'm sure they're getting tons of traffic. <laughs> so I can only show, I think, the top picture. After that, it gets a little nudie. Yes. Yeah, you can only show the top picture. Yeah, there's some, but this one I can show. This has to be shopped. I know she has a big butt, but this is, that's not a human butt. How sharp are her knees? That <laughs> is, it's like a perfect, you know, like. Look at the, look know, at the shadow. Angle. Look at the shadow of her. Yeah. Look how, her shadow is what more, is more well-defined than most women. <laughs> it's so Photoshopped. Yeah. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> If you want to, if you look at the lines of red next to the lines of 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 um, look at the lines of her dress. Oh well, Why yeah, it's clearly like photoshopped. I mean, you'd have to be half past retarded to think this. Like is it's real. not even photoshopped well. She doesn't even fit in well with the background behind her. Like she's been adjusted everywhere. Like she's like a tin man. You're going around like ink ink ink. Like like everything's been worked on. So the first shot, she's bent over, um, slightly, sort of arc arcing her back and sticking her booty out. And she's got a uh, champagne glass it, it's sitting on her It's butt out, ass. chest forward, is what she's got going on there. Yeah, champagne gla glass on her ass, and she's popping the cork on a bottle in front of her, and it's going over her head and pouring into the glass. Which is a cool, I thought that was pretty cool. But as you go through the rest of her pictures, the next one is just... And, and look uh, at the way she's holding that champagne bottle. If that's not intended to be phallic, I don't know what is. Of course. She's giving a champagne bottle a hand job. As it ejaculates over her head and lands into a glass on her butt. Totally. No, you don't think they would do that on purpose. Just a happy coincidence. <laughs> so the next photograph is a side profile of her uh, naked. She's she's taking her dress down to below her ass, which is once again insanely large. And these are just photoshopped. Like I think her breasts do look that good. Yeah. I've seen like some like like they do selfie pictures that got leaked forever ago, and her her tits look great. But her butt, her her waistline, do not look like this. Her stomach doesn't look like that. Yeah, either. this is so fake. This is not real. Why is she on stilts? Why is she on stilts in every one of these? She's standing on some sort of platform that's made to look like it's still her dress. Yeah. If look, you go if to you number look at the three, last one, is, is that are we talking about the same one? No, I'm talking no, about number yeah, three. She's okay. she's showing her ass. Um, she's like she's bent over slightly, and it's like all you can you can see her ass like full on. And she doesn't even look human. Her ass is literally wider than her shoulders, seemingly. And she looks like a centaur. She doesn't look like a human being anymore in that, because her waist is way too tiny to be a human. And then the, the last photo is just full frontal nudity, like stomach and crotch and enormous nice tits. Her whole face looks like you, you could fit three of her faces on one ass cheek. It's that out of proportion. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Her ass is like... 
six times bigger than her head. Yeah, this is, and, and even on this picture, like, you can see, like, you can see the pixels that have gone awry. You know, <laughs> look at her back. You can, this is nonsense. Yeah. Now, Compl- now her nonsense. ass is totally fake, by the way. She's, she's had ass. This implants. whole thing's fake. No, I mean, she's no. had ass implants. Like, that's not her ass. She's had ass implants? Oh. Yes. I wonder what it feels like to sit on an ass implant. Probably like sitting on a nice cushion. I bet it's nice. I want some. Mm. Are they just like boob implants where it's full of the... the nah, they're silicone? different. It's a different consistency and shape, and you know they're made to make your booty look big and whatever you want it to look like. And I would imagine it's like sitting on a nice cushion all of a sudden. You're like, yeah, it's pretty cool. I remember Hank Hill had that problem, but he had the prosthetic he had to wear back there. The pos- <laughs> prosthetic. I got a question no, about fake that. boobs for yeah. Kyle. I don't. Taylor, do you have any expertise in fake boobs? No. No, no, none throughout the years or anything. I do not. Okay, but I'm I'm sure Kyle has some expertise in fake boobs. Lots. Um, now a lot of guys have a strong distaste for them because they don't feel natural. Is that still true? Have they not perfected oh. fake boob technology? They 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 had it perfected from the beginning, but they had to go away from silicone to to um saline to, um, perhaps. saline for mm-hmm. safety reasons. Though some people they, they went back now now it's not as much of a safety concern. Some people still do get silicone. But um, the real issue with them feeling nice mm-hmm. and looking nice is how big they were before you got implants. If you were completely flat chested and then you got like a, you know a B cup or a C cup, you know like cantaloupe halves or something, mm-hmm. then they're not going to feel real. They're going to feel like bags of plastic bags under your skin that you can literally like feel what's going on there. That like oh I can tell that's a bag of something inside of you. Mm-hmm. But if they had like a nice B cup, but and they just went up to a nice C cup or maybe to a D, then they're really awesome because like there's a top layer of fat up here that's like still like real boob. That's the, like the part you're gonna touch. I guess if you like go under and like try to find some like weird feeling stuff, you might. But like the main boob squeezing parts of the boob feel really natural and they're huge and perky and and great. No. But if Oh, I, sorry. I thought there was a. I have more I'm questions. Just, I'm just going to reiterate that if they didn't have much to start with, then so so it's not a good idea. I have heard that sometimes when a woman has a boob implant, she no longer wants them to be part of the whole sex act. Right? That that it's like, oh yeah, but they're sensitive, or they're no longer sensitive, or like they're just for looking at that point. And that to me would be a bigger issue. Like I can deal with almost any consistency or feeling or whatever but if they're no Where'd longer you... play toys then i've this... never heard that we i'm not sure that i've um i've known like five different women with, with breast implants and like no um there is some sensitivity issues like the first six or eight months after no, surgery no oversensitive like, or under like numbness um numbness okay um uh it's like her her uh her right nipple was numb for like nine months or something mm-hmm. she's like no, no no that's the good one <laughs> oh, okay. Right, but, um, but it all eventually, like you know, everything was all good as far as the sensitivity. I've never d- known one who was like that continued forever or anything. I might have a little expertise on that. It, it when um, nerves regrow, they regrow at about like a millimeter a month. And um, my guess is that there was some sort of nerve damage there, and it just took a little while for it to come back and and regain that thing. I had um, nerve damage on my hand, and at first. I would burn it and I would only discover it because I'd smell it or like there was a day I found a thumbtack in it, right? Whereas that, like that couldn't possibly happen to you, right? But I had so little sensitivity in my palm that that sort of thing was happening. It was, I was injuring it and not knowing that it was injured. But um, now it, it's not fully sensitive. I still have a damaged hand, but um, that wouldn't happen anymore. I would know that I'm burning it. Like I wouldn't just like, you smell that? It smells like burning. Fl- oh fuck! <laughs> you know, like that's not a thing that that happens today, but it did. Well, it, what do you think? So these are totally photoshopped, but mm-hmm. I, I, so there's really nothing to be said about them other than that. I don't think she looks this good. I do think she looks good though. I'd rather see what she actually looked like than this, because this just doesn't mean anything. To now, me would it at be all. a letdown though? Like I, I feel like um. Yeah. Let me show you like what she actually. Okay. Well, sometimes when you see what a woman you can actually tell she didn't think she looked as good short. Sometimes when you see what a woman actually looks like, suddenly she's a little like beautiful but attainable. Not so much different than somebody that you maybe you've been with before. And you realize that like, oh yeah, that amazing version of her was shopped all along. Or, you know, she had been standing on platforms next to those actors all this time or something like that. 
All right. So, so let's see there's nothing been, there's nothing uh, doctored about that. That's just a selfie. And there's one from behind and one in front. Yeah, that is not the same ass we saw, you know, three minutes ago. No, but it still looks great. Look, it looks like a human body part. It looks good. It looks like human body part, not freak show. Yeah, that I think it's still, it, it's still freak show big. It really is. Like, if you go through some of these other photos, it is freak show big. I don't even think it's practical. I don't even know if I've got enough dick to fuck her from behind. That thing is enormous. Like, like, it, looks <laughs> like, it's like it looks like she's got, like, six That's or eight. she only dates of, black guys. Right? It looks like she's got like six or eight inches of just ass. Like, if you don't have an additional three to five, then you're really not going to be able to cut it. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You need a minimum really of like nine or ten. To you need an 11 inch d d dick to, to work that from the back. Yeah. It's, uh, it's quite impressive. Um, I think she's attractive. I think she's pretty. I think she's a real scumbag and like sleazy individual. And Why? What, what is she doing that makes her so awful? Oh, I just think she's an attention whore. I think just she's literally. in the attention whore business. She has taken her 15 minutes of fame and turned it into a pretty big career. Mm, I don't care. I, I think it's gross. You forget, think, Kyle. This is Woody, the Kim Kardashian apologist. So I, I just <laughs> just live it up. And be a whore. I mean, I, I wouldn't. Have, I didn't even want to talk about it on the show, but then I realized it'd be it'd be better to talk about it and make sure everyone knows that these are not real pictures. Because mm. they're just. They're, they're, Everyone should know this isn't even possible. Like, like she's 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 got ass implants. It's 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 not real. She has some kind of process where they like go and vacuum her ass every week just to get rid of the cellulite. I heard like, it's not a vacuum. It's a um like a really aggressive, painful massage, and and they work the cellulite. People, uh, cellulite is um, what what causes cellulite? It's like the skin improperly attaching to the fat or something. Something like that. Yeah, so they they just massage that cellulite really hard until her skin is smooth, and um, from what I'm told, it's really not fun to endure. But she I does want that, that job. <laughs> Kim Kardashian's ass masseuse. <laughs> yeah, I don't I, care what it pays. I don't care what the hours <laughs> are. Like nights, weekends. If there was a phone call right now, y yes, hello. A ass masseuse. I'll be right there. Like, like, <laughs> you gotta go. You gotta go for that Kim Kardashian ass masseuse job, right? Like, and on the way, like, you gotta get some of those hand strengthener things, like constantly be pumping them to your forearms or like Popeyes. Like, you really want to be the best you can be. M masseuse. I don't think I'd be cut out for that job. Well, certainly I have a damaged hand, so I'm not. But, um, like. It, it, have you ever tried to give a massage? If you're like me, you wear out in like four or six minutes tops. If you give a lot of massages, you don't after a while. I would guess, you know, like, like any other muscle. But I, I, I'm impressed by masseuse hand strength. Those guys are, or girls really got it going on. Yeah, I was in, um, I was in a strip club in Kentucky one time, and uh, there was this Russian chick, and she wasn't a stripper, and she wasn't, she was wearing an like, evening Ooh. wear. She wasn't. She wasn't uh, uh, like dressed provocatively or anything, but she was a masseuse, like a legit one. Mm -hmm. And you could pay her like ten dollars for a twenty-minute massage or something like that. And like while you watch the lady, like some other chicks strip, like she would just get, like rub your shoulders, and it was awesome. I was giving her more money than I was giving the strippers. They were getting all pissed. <laughs> I was just like, again, <laughs> like, you know. Like, like an hour and a half it went by and she's just I'm like are you getting tired no I never get tired she's just going to work back there an and hour and a half that's You're surprising such a Kyle runner. does a good Russian accent <laughs> <laughs> she um and it, her hand strength you were talking about at first when she first started like the first one she was like how hard do you like and I'm just like um I don't know like what scale of one to ten she's like yeah scale one to ten and I'm like I don't know like a like an eight she goes and I'm just like, S four! Four! <laughs> four! <laughs> oh, dude, that was a bad move. You always start out low on the scale on something like that, so then you don't, don't look like a bitch for, for she, she, you she know, going she, back on it. I didn't know she had, like, Helga, like, <laughs> demon of the dark, like, hands. Like, she was so fucking strong. She <laughs> really was digging in there, and I was like, all right, it was four. Four. No, it was... <laughs> But yeah. um, every every so often, I'll, like I don't get masseuse, massages very often, but um, we had one on a Disney cruise, and they're like, "Do you want a deep tissue massage?" Which is code for should this really hurt? And <laughs> I, I did that once when I was in my twenties or something, and uh, 
it hurt a lot, a lot. Like I was a little sore going into it, which is why I wanted a massage. I left sore everywhere. <laughs> And and they were like, well, you know, we get the toxins out. Like that's a fucking thing. I'm like, no, yeah, I, I, that's a thing. Oh, the toxins. Yeah, no, I, I, the, I, the I toxins go, weren't no, having. No, 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 hang on a minute. I, I, and the, think about it. The toxins were not causing problems until she got them out. So, put them back. No, I'm. I I disagree with you here because I like going to the chiropractor and I like getting uh, intense massages and I, I really do. A, I, I I can imagine that I'm like imagining like my muscles like maybe if if like a muscle group hasn't been active in a while like you know blood pumping through it maybe there's some like mercury like built up in there maybe there's some cholesterol dangling in there maybe she could rub the fuck out of it and just like a sponge you know just squeeze my muscles like a sponge any gook that's in there gets squished out. Liver does its job, and I'm back to, you know, back in business. Less toxic. I hear you. My own uneducated theory is that she is bruising me, and she didn't release any toxins at all. She just damaged me slightly, and yes. I well, have to heal. I, I don't know yeah, that that's not a bad thing, too, really because, <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, you know, the way it's, muscle growth works is, is you know, you're, you're, you're tearing your muscles to a certain extent. Maybe this massage is going to uh, help some muscle growth in the future. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll, maybe if you got your ass beat up every day, you would just get stronger. Yeah, that, I've often wondered that. Like, I know if you lift, no. your, your muscles, like, like you said, I'm no expert, but they tear a little bit and then they rebuild stronger, I'm told. It's so, like this. So it, 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 I, the way I understand it is there, there's... Um, the, mus the, the protein fibers are latching onto each other like this, and, uh, the muscle fibers, and when it, you're tearing like this way. So like a beating wouldn't actually make you stronger. I, I was just joking. I'm sure you know, it wouldn't, like, but I, I feel like our, our PKA medicine is right there factually with our statistics. <laughs> 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 no, this is all, these are facts. And like, and on, like for real, I really think the reason they make it so painful is because like the same reason they make mouthwash painful is because like you feel like something's getting done when it's painful. They could make it so it didn't burn, you but think? this deep tissue massage the whole time—if it was just a little kind of thing—they wouldn't. You wouldn't be like, "There's no way those toxins are just coming out like that." They're stubborn toxins, so they have to do their nonsense. Like we're really getting it out of there, and it's really unpleasant. I, 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 I had a massage. I had a massage one time, and um, the 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 lady was really hot, and uh, she was like up around my neck and like the back of my neck in that area. She was like, oh, you're really, really tense. She was like, I've never felt any knots like this before. She's like, I need to rub these out, but it's going to be very painful. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so she's just like in there with her thumb, like like just boring into my back. And it was just excruciating pain for, for at least five minutes of rubbing on like multiple spots. It was awful. But when it was over, I was like, oh, wow, I've got... I've got movement I haven't had in a while. Like I'm, I'm limbered up. This is good stuff. Mm. Like she legitimately like was the same. Me. This was the strip club lady. No, this was at a, like a spa in Tennessee. I went to I actually have a massage. Jackie, she didn't know what to get me for Christmas last year, and she bought me a, 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 a like treatment at the spa for Christmas, and I still haven't gone. The, all this massage talk makes me want to go get it. Oh, it's See. great. Yeah. You, yeah, I've never had a massage. Know? Now, um, when you get a massage, do you have a preference for, for a man or a woman? Uh, is that a big deal for you? Do you not care? What are your thoughts on Two that? Men. It's it's a big deal, and um, more than that, I'm I'm sort of I'm a jealous guy. So, like the way that we roll in my house is, I get a woman, and Jackie gets a woman. <laughs> that's how we go. Because <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. And, I, that's that's exactly what I've done in the past, and and my girlfriend completely agreed, and we were both on the same page. She's like, "No, it'd be weird if a dude was rubbing on you," and I was like, "Yeah, and it'd be weird if a dude was rubbing on you," and she was like, "Yep, totally agreed, hundred percent." She because we both know that most likely the the female ma massage person isn't getting her jollies off rubbing me, like right, like she might think I'm attractive, she might be like, "Oh, she most definitely thinks guy. that about me." You're, but, she, but but you know I'm like the tenth attractive guy who's who she's whose ass she has rubbed this week. She doesn't care. Mm -hmm. So like, but the dude, I feel like all these male masseuse uh, guys are like are kind of horn dogs at heart. They're just like, and I've heard lots of stories, and I've heard the Stern Show talk about this about women who have had experiences where like the guy would you know like they start feeling them up and stuff, and then and, and you know everybody would have a good time maybe. You know, oh, maybe I'm feeling he, a lot of tension right here under your nipple. <laughs> yeah, maybe or like the guy would have an erection and he kind of like put her hand like near his erection or bump her hand with it and stuff like that. So like, no, 
if she gets a girl, I get a girl. Because for the most part, women are more decent individuals when it comes to... Mixing, to sexy stuff, uh, yeah. Mixing business and pleasure. Yeah, and I was afraid I, someone would, like, judge my relationship as unequal and not good or something. I'm glad you had the same thought process. Because it's like, you know what? This works for us. You do what works for you, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, that, that's that's how I like it. Girl, yeah, I don't, care, I don't care who massages your wife, yeah, you know, but it's up to it's up to me and my significant other who massages us. You know, that's nobody's business. Yeah. Have you guys done like other spa related stuff, like can you ask cucumbers on the stuff like that? You got a uh, little robotic. Can you say that again? Oh, sorry. Have you guys ever experienced the like face masks and that shit, or just yeah. massages? Yeah, I've done all that stuff. Um, not face masks, but I I think I've had um like hot smooth stones placed on me. Um, I don't know if you've ever like they they'll put like two stones on your lower back and they're extra warm and they kind of press them in and some other things like that. I had one with Jackie on a Disney ship. <laughs> like you go in Mickey Mouse massage you. <laughs> no, no they, get this. So there's two I'm chicks. There, what are you? <laughs> it's a group massage. <laughs> yeah. And there's two tables in there and the chicks come and they like lube you all up in oils and massage you and stuff. Then they leave you alone for half an hour and then they come back and massage you again. And, and that leave you alone, like you've got the room to yourself, they lock it, it's totally private. And there's a deck that leads out, also private, but of course it's an ocean front view because we're talking about a cruise ship. So we're like sailing across, I forget, but I think we were sailing to Hawaii on a cruise ship and uh, it's... It, the unspoken thing there is you're supposed to fuck at this point. Like, you, you get your massage, then you're alone and naked and lubed up for a while, and then you get another massage. And and uh, that was a good day. I wouldn't nice. want to be the part two masseuse, having to wonder <laughs> if all of those fluids <laughs> were, just like, towel the steaming off of all of you. <laughs> yeah, they have to have, like, a photographic memory as they're leaving the room. Like, I need to notice what's new. I need to know what to avoid. Uh, well, there's, like, a, I think there's a like, shower and a hot tub. Oh, we come with a fight. Yeah, like, we were literally in a hot tub uh, when they came you, back. You, had, you and your wife banged in a public hot tub? Uh, not on the hot tub, no. There was, like, a lounge swingy thing in there it was like a oh was it suspended from the ceiling i if i remember it right it was almost like um you know like a porch swing it was like a queen size bed porch swing okay <laughs> if i and uh and of and, course there's sheets to change and stuff on it and i'll uh, bet and yeah uh, <laughs> yeah so it, no it, just the mattress this is a disney cruise ship this a is a pretty towels. um top shelf a uh, little sex capade that they put on there. Really? Mm -hmm. When do they do they have like some Filipino boy women who come in at any point? Or you is know, that what happens cruise? on the cruise ship stays on the cruise ship? No, they um, I, I, dude, there was a Disney advertisement. This was the greatest thing, and um, so there's like a mom on the elevator pushing like a nine year old and a baby in a stroller, and uh, um. Like the the nine year old has the Disney ear hat on, and the guy walks in and he's like, you know, oh, did you go to Disney World? And she's like, yeah, we did. And uh, did you like it? Oh, and then they flash to all these scenes with like water slides and shows and whatnot. And uh, he's like, well, when did you go? And she's like, we went last year. And like, is that your baby sister? Yeah, mommy calls her our little souvenir, right? And it was totally like a come on the cruise ship. We'll watch your kids for you. Wink, wink. Like, that was the core of the advertisement. And the more little souvenir, of course, was the baby from the cruise ship. Isn't that weird how, like, like fucked up and weirded out those kids would be if they knew that 20 yards from their goofy sing-along puppet show, their parents were <laughs> fucking on a weird, extravagant mattress swinging from the ceiling <laughs> and then get to come in. Hey, kids. Oh, Mom, come here and give me a kiss. Oh, I just blew your father. Well, okay. <laughs> like, that's... <laughs> that's oh. Like, if you went on a Disney cruise as a child, your parents were fucking in a swing right as you were doing the, you know, puppet show or, you know, goofy dance along or whatever they do. I've never been, so I don't know. <laughs> it's, um, wow. yeah, so, you know, they, they watch your kids for you. And, uh, you know, they, they're, we had a couple's massage. So, um, we got a couple different things we go to here. Do you have a uh, preference? 
Um, I, we haven't talked about the uh, this. We la- We landed on a um, meteor. Comet. Comet. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know the difference. Like, so a comet is in a predictable arc. Like it's in and out of um, the. Um, our okay. Orbit. Yeah, and a yeah. meteor just sort of is a flyby. Yeah, the meteors are just kind of random, like floating around through space, bumping on shit. Comets are making a an orbit. So we missed the landing site by a kilometer, I guess? Uh, at first, uh, they bounced off the thing um, a couple times, I think. Like, uh, it says the lander bounced twice initially about one kilometer back out into space before settling in the shadow of a cliff one kilometer from its intended target site. It may now be problematic to get enough sunlight to charge its battery systems. But uh, it's, so the the European Space Agency uh, launched this thing. But it's the Rosetta, I believe the the thing is called, uh, in 2004. No, Wait, it's the uh, Europeans how do you pronounce did this? this. It's Phi or something. I don't know how to pronounce the name of it. Um, the name of the craft, P H I L A. Phil Sure, that seems unlikely though. Mm, okay. But I, I saw a picture of the um, the the asteroid. Uh, like compared with the city of Los Angeles today, and it's so enormous. This thing's gargantuan. So I'm I'm just sad that it's not an American achievement. I wish that it was. We should put more money into NASA. Yeah, but like I like the old joke. The whole like there's two kinds of countries in this world: those that use the metric system and those that put a man on the moon. Right, <laughs> like. <laughs> And and you, you, maybe we need to fund NASA a little more if we want to be, uh, you know, the first people to put a satellite on a comet or whatever you call it. It's probably not a satellite if it lands. The um, yeah, it's it had a lander. It's it, this thing's been robot been on the probe since 2004. It's a it, they're calling it a robot probe. So um, yeah, in 2004, that's like this thing's literally been. Flying across the sky for 10 years, and they hit it. That's pretty good you know, calculation. It's like, it's like 3 billion miles away. <laughs> uh, more. Six, oh, wait. 4 billion miles. I, okay. I saw 6.4 billion Yeet. kilometers, and I, I thought you were further off. But yeah, 4 billion miles. You're only off by a billion miles. Pretty close in space. Yeah. So uh, I, I think it's a really cool achievement, but it, it is kind of sad that it wasn't ours. We really should fund NASA more. It's such a tiny percentage of our annual budget goes to goes to NASA. I'd like to see it be like 10%. Like, let's do some shit. What should we take it out of? Defense. Oh, it take, takes take like 5% out of defense, and, uh, you know... Then we won't have like twenty aircraft carriers. We'll <laughs> we'll only have we'll only have like the top three air forces in the world or something maybe. Instead like, of a better funded military than the next ten combined, it'll only be like the next seven combined. Yeah, something like that. Like like I don't care. There's there's plenty of things you could take it from. There's plenty of ways that they could just trim the fat and, and take it from there. What however it's done, I don't care. But I'd like to see NASA get a a lot more money. I'd like to see us do some shit. It uh, it's taken them too long to get to Mars. They should have been there by now. I Are should the Republicans going to do it? Who'd I don't be know. More likely I don't know who's to, to make it, NASA but... awesome. Republicans or Democrats? I mean, historically, neither. But... Probably, you would you would think it would be the Democratic constituency that would want it, but who knows? Um, I think I think everybody likes space to a certain extent. I feel um, like I'm just thinking this through. It seems like more Democrats, right? Like they're the kind that doesn't recoil in horror at every piece of government spending. Oh, he'll come back. Um, Democrats are also a little more pro-science, whereas Republicans are sometimes anti-science, to be honest. So I guess Democrats would do that a little more, but they haven't done it this term, and so you, you can't give them too much credit. Yeah, I want to go to space. They need to hurry up. Hmm. I don't know what my top priority is. Internet. So Obama came out for that. Uh, <laughs> Obama came out and said we need to make the internet, I guess, a tier two communication system, which means, if I have this right, Utility. which means telecommunication system. So it's going to have certain like guarantees in terms of you know bandwidth and reliability and uh, accessibility to rural areas and things like that. And then. Um, AT&T came out and said, oh, well, if you want us to meet all those obligations, forget it. 
we're going to stop investing in gigabit internet. Hmm. And some people were like, well, you're not doing it anyway. But I talked to Dr. Shiz about it, and he's like, actually, they are. Actually, AT&T is actually delivering, I'm saying actually a lot, is delivering on the optic rollout even more than Google is. Google has something in, I think, Utah that they just bought from another company. They have the Kansas City stuff, which is awesome. And then there's Austin, which still isn't happening. They were supposed to have this rolled out a long time ago. And um, they're in, they like sort of said they were coming to Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill area. But in that time, Frontier and somebody else, I forget, have both started actually rolling out gigabit internet in the Raleigh area. And Google's still saying it's a maybe. So I don't know what the scoop is with that, but I I just, Google's all talk. You get outside Uh Kansas City and what are they doing? They just spent a billion dollars to lease um, some NASA um, facilities. They're going to start their own space division. Google is. Space and uh, aeronautics. Google Hmm. wants to go to space. It sounds awesome, but I don't know. They did maps and they did the search engine. And they did mail. They did DNS. Maybe this list goes on pretty long. I just want gig, dude. I want gigabit internet. It is huge, and America would be advanced if we did it. And I just don't feel like it's getting prioritized. I'd rather have space. You know, I'd rather have gigabit internet. <laughs> and you know what? I personally uh, expect to get 100 by 10 soon, probably this year. So that's That'd pretty be really exciting. nice. Yeah, that would be uh, that'd be pretty legit. And when I get 100 by 10, I tend to actually get it. Like, I have 50 by 5 now. And, like, whenever Chiz and I are downloading something at the same time, I get mine a lot quicker. And he has 100 by 10. He's not really getting 100 by 10. Something's going wrong. Maybe he's on wireless or something, and that's where it's weak. I don't know. But. (sighs) So so, I'm trying to find uh, someone someone animated. um, that, That poop story of mine. And mm-hmm. it's, it's really good. I'm trying to find it. I had forgotten all about that. That was awful. Did you like the uh, the movie you watched this week? I did. I didn't expect to. So, did does the world know we were watching Planet of the Apes, or was it something yeah, different? I- no, I think yeah, we we'd already mentioned that that was supposed to be the movie. So we watched Planet of the Apes, uh, the first one, which was the reboot, not the most recent one, which is the I guess the second in the reboot series. It's supposed to be an even better movie, but I liked the first one. I thought it was really good. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Um, I liked how they explained, you know, how the apes got smart. I liked uh, that they made the humans just just obnoxious enough that I didn't mind the apes were taken over. Uh, I liked it a lot. The CGI was very good. I thought at first I thought it was I, I saw a few things I didn't like, but then I got used to it, I guess, and it looked smooth for the rest of the film. And, I thought the um, CGI was really good. I was very impressed with the CGI. Yeah, um, and especially like the facial expression of the of, of Caesar. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he looked intelligent. He looked really smart. You could tell there was just a lot of there was a lot going on in there. Yeah, uh, I don't want to spoil it for anyone who's going to watch, but they really explained the plot line in a way that made sense to me, right? Because I had a bunch of, like, things I didn't like about the ape rise that uh, after watching the movie, I was like, oh, this is a storyline I can get along with. It's cool. Yeah, they explained how it happened, and they Mm -hmm. made it believable. You know, as long as you believe a a couple of things, you don't have to believe anything too fantastic to believe that there could be a planet of the apes, I suppose. Mm. Is Taylor here? Yes. I'm I'm trying to be here. Sorry, I'm I'm just hearing about a lot of robot voices. Yeah, oh, I mean nice. clearly it's not some like personal failing. He <laughs> needs gigabit internet. Yeah, I'm responding to what you guys say three minutes ago, and I feel like a jackass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> His comedic timing making, is like, good. making jokes and oh, it's it's crippled right now. <laughs> it's crippled. Um, oh, while he gets that sorted out, Kyle, are we an hour in? 
Um, getting there. Let me pull it. I know what you're getting at. Let me let me look around here. I have so many windows open, but um, I believe you're. Uh, it's time to talk about AppWin.com. It is. AppWin. Are you guys hearing me in real time now, or am I still really delayed? Yeah, yeah. I think you're hearing us. Who even knows? <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. When I say, fi I'll say fire, and when as soon as you hear me, you say ice. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I did. I did that as a joke. I did that as a joke. So go ahead. Okay. Okay. Fire. <laughs> ice. Wow. For real. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I think were you we're goofing? Almost perfect. No, I was. I was doing it. <laughs> Uh, let's try it with me now. Uh, I'm going to say fire in, in one moment. Fire. Ice. Whew. That was, like, you think in three and a half seconds maybe he's out? I'll just have to anticipate the conversation topics and work from there. Okay, so appwin.com. A bit about appwin.com. <laughs> appwin is a fun service where we give away uh, cool prizes like iPads, iPods, gift cards, and more. Uh, they wanted to keep AppWin very simple. Anyone in the world can participate by downloading and rating apps to enter the contest that uh, they host. You go to the site, find the prizes uh, you'd like to win, and you enter to win by downloading and rating the app for that contest. Um, the, uh, the iPod Touch contest being hosted, and uh, all users have to do is to uh, is enter... Excuse me. I, the iPod Touch contest being hosted, uh, all, use, all users have to do to enter is download and rate... War of Nations on their iOS device. If they don't have an iOS device, you can uh, complete those steps on iTunes using your desktop computer. So basically, you go on there, you you uh, find the prizes that you're interested in, and then you rate the uh, you rate the corresponding apps, and you're entered for a chance to win them. Totally awesome. You don't even. It's need international, them. so it's open to everyone. Yep, anywhere in the world, you can win yourself an iPad Touch, iPod Touch, I think, just by uh, just by rating this game. Yeah, okay. one thing to keep in mind though, if you've you know you've done this before, if you, if you've already uh, entered in the past for the War of Nations contest, you have to download the new version and rate it again to to be entered for the uh, for that contest. All right, so appwin.com, awesome place to be. Yeah, I, I think you could. Uh, there's a lot of different things to give away there. Or when, I didn't I didn't notice if they're giving away any Xbox One. We really need to crack these open. When are we gonna do that? When are we going to crack these open and play some Assassin's Creed? Um, when ifs. I can tell you're pumped, so I don't <laughs> want to get too excited about this right now. You yeah, know, I, I could have a heart attack. And... Yeah, I know. You just had that strawberry uh, strawberry shortcake and that French sausage. Uh, and <laughs> I, I swear that sausage hard. is calling me. I, I, like, as, as dreadful as are it was, I, I almost... I, like, I'm like, what are the... I want to give another. Do yourself a favor here. Take take one of these tiny little toast things. Take one of these tiny little toast things and dip it in the in the jam. Hmm. That's where it's at, huh? Oh yeah, big time. Hmm. See, I've got this tiny little. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> I'm it definitely is... more excited about the gift bag. <laughs> it is so crunchy. Like you, you're this far from the mic, and it's like honka, honka. Uh, oh, so um, house talk. I'll do a little bit of house talk. I, some people everyone are, loves it. It's that time. <laughs> some people do love it. I see. I do live streams and stuff, and they're like house talk. Give us updates, and and um, there's not a ton to update. I met with the Time Warner guy today on site, and um, I'm, it's going well. I. I woke up this morning and got some really bad news. Like they were like, "It's going to be ten grand." After they told me it was going to be forty five hundred, and it was like, "Darn it!" You know, I just can't seem to catch a break. I met with the guy on site. We planned it out. He is going to do a great job rolling out the line. Repeaters all the way. Signal boosted. Fantastic. Right to where I want it to the house for thirty one hundred. And oh, uh, that's great. Yeah, it, it's really great news. It, it's thousands that I don't have to spend now. Yeah, if we could just get beyond that that other little. Uh, I don't know if you, it's sort of a, a one of those things that I'm not sure if you want to be known because maybe it gives away the the kind of house you're after that that discrepancy that there was with the contract about that one item. We can talk about it. Um, I, I, did you talk about the playset? Yep. Well, yep. 
Yeah. Yeah, I can talk so, about that. Has there been any... So, if, in Fast Forward, I believe there was a... When they uh, appraised the home, uh, they accounted that the value of that play set was like zero dollars, and mm -hmm. so in the end, they're saying that you know either you give us additional money on top of everything for that play set, or we're just going to take it with us. Exactly, and, um, and you kind of want that play set because you felt like it was part of the value of what you were paying originally. I, I want the play set, but it's not a really big deal to me. It's like, I'd, I'd like to have it, but I certainly wouldn't give money for it. I just want it. It's very nice, the play set. It's, it's 11, already there. It's $11,000 play set. I've, have you ever seen 11? But my real estate agent saw that play set and said, I think this guy loves his kids more than I do. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it is an amazing $11,000 play set. And um, the way I remember it, like... So they came with a counter offer and it listed like the, it said the play set basically was like, has no value and it'll be on a separate bill of sale. And it was included in that. I talked to the seller today and that's what they meant. It wasn't everyday language. So even a guy who's somewhat educated could maybe not know what they meant. And, uh, and it was included. And then all the offers since then were like, same deal as the previous one, but uh, this much money. No, same deal as the previous one, but this much money. We went back and forth until we landed on the same dollar amount. And uh, somewhere along the way, it said no personal property, which I didn't interpret the play set to be personal property. To me, it's part of the land and the house and et cetera. And uh, they came today and they're like, you know what? For 8,500, you can keep the play set. And I'm like, no, no. That, that, the play set's value to me is more than zero, but I'm certainly not giving 8,500. My daughter's 15. She's past play set age. And my son is 11. He's soon to be past place at age. I'd like it, but I'm not going to pay top dollar for it. And by the way, he has, uh, I don't want to give away his personal situation, but he has several kids, all of them still in the heart of place at age. And that was the kicker for me. It was like, you know what? I could probably play hardball and threaten to pull out of this whole thing and, uh, and get him to, to um, cave on this issue. Cause he's already moved out of the house. He's already closing on a new house of his own. You know, it, all his hopes and dreams are wrapped up in this thing just like mine. No one has an easier situation to back out of than me. I still live here. I'd just be like, never mind. There's and, backup houses. Yeah, yeah, there's backup houses. And he'd be fucked, right? He'd be like, oh my God, now I can't get my new house. Now, I, I could do that. But in the end, I was like, I don't want to. You know, because really, like, who am I going for here? His kids. It yep. is, is is what was in my head, so um, Here's I'm what like I would have done. I'd have he would have had to pay some amount of money for that play set, not eleven thousand, not eight thousand, but some sum of money to at least fix the ugly spot in the yard that's going to be left. I feel like maybe like, there's only like a couple points of contact on the ground. It's probably not a big deal. A thousand dollars for the damage, if you ask me. <laughs> and uh, he, I talked to him today, and he's like, it's going to cost me twenty five hundred dollars just to like move this play set no you're wrong it's gonna cost you 3500 because <laughs> Cause you owe me a grand so you so owe me a grand before you get started i i think he's like damn you know in, in, if if he's anything like most people including me he's not swimming in cash at the point he's buying a new house right most people either spend all their cash to to have as big a deposit as possible or buy as much house as they have cash or, or whatever so um yeah, I think yeah, the 2500 matters to him, too. And he's trying to, like, basically get me to give him money and get out of this $2,500 fee. And uh, I was like, nope, you can pay it. You're not getting money from me to, to leave it here. And that's, uh, it, it just, and like I said, I felt like I'd be taking it from his kids. So uh, I was like, yeah, take it away. You know, that's that's where that is. So uh, Well, we don't need that bullshit place set anyway. We'll put a fucking cannon out there that shoots people. We'll, we'll be launching Colin into a lake we'll build. Jackie we wants want. a parkour course. She wants, you know, a bunch of boxes and ramps and uh, um, what is the little beam people call, walk on? Like a gymnast? High beam? She wants um, Balance beam? Balance beam is what I'm going for. Yeah. She wants a balance beam and some boxes and like a, they have like a picture a nine foot hall nine foot tall triangle that they like sort of run up the triangle a little bit and grab it with their fingers and pull themselves the rest of the way. She says, make a parkour course. Hmm. I ran the, uh, the bales of hay paintball idea past her. And she liked that. Um, there's a lot of things we can do. So 
Well, yeah, you can that's get That's an excellent idea. The parkour thing, though, like, if you actually do get in, like, if you get a parkour set, you're going to look like a real dick if you can't at least kind of do it. <laughs> you know? Well, so you're Colin... going to have to invest in time to do that. Well, Colin already is a, uh, a little parkour uh, aficionado. I guess he's been going to classes, right? Yeah, Colin's been taking parkour lessons for a while now. And uh, I've seen him do it. He looks like a normal person. But, uh, you know, he's like, you ever see those parkour people and you're like, oh, my God. Like, that's yeah. extreme running. That's amazing. Uh, you would look at Colin and be like, oh, he looks like he's having fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and he is. Uh, it, it's not every environment is so accepting of him because he doesn't talk that well. But uh, he seems to have genuine friendships amongst other kids in the class. And the, uh, the teacher sets a culture that is great. And um, I think he goes twice a week, maybe. And we wouldn't miss it for the world. I mean, we never miss it because uh, it's it, like when you've got a kid like Colin, exposure to the rest of the world is gigantic. Like real friendships and you know, talking that's outside your regular routine. Like Jackie and I know his vocabulary and tend to exist inside of that. And it's hard not to. But when he goes out and, you know, he's listening to his friends and the parkour teacher and things like that, it's invaluable to him. So uh, uh, he has a real good experience there. That's awesome. Yeah. The, uh, as far as the paintball thing goes, you can get those square hay bales. You know the ones I'm talking about, the I kind do. that like a person throws around? Mm -hmm. You can get those wrapped in plastic like so that they're weatherproofed. And hmm. they, they make the balers that actually do that for you. And that way you could store it for the winter, you know, outdoors. That's the idea of it. But if you're doing like a paintball course, the, the thing would be that, you know, you don't have rotting piles of hay that are uncomfortable to rub against as your field. You have nice plastic barriers that always stay square and hard and, you know, paintballs don't go through that stuff. And now, a bale of hay is pretty cheap, right? Like $15 maybe? $4. $4 I don't know how much for... I don't know how much it would cost wrapped. Like, like you might be looking at another, like, it might be $10 wrapped. I don't fucking know. Mm -hmm. um, Jeez. Who's your hay guy? I get it for like $1.75. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, His if I really, is back. <laughs> if I really wanted it, I know a guy who like could just I, I could literally make my own hay. I'm sure, but like, let's see, square wrapped hay bales. I'm so excited. I um, so I was in the area with the Time Warner guy. I stopped by the tractor dealership and picked up the manual so I can peruse it in my spare time. Oh, that's lame. Wow. It, 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 here I am, <laughs> so lame. <laughs> Um, I can't. I, you're gonna have so much fun with that tractor. Seriously, though, like, like when I, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, you out there with your Carhartt jacket, like bush hogging a field. Yeah, that, I may have made great. a deal for a 72 inch, 33 horsepower Dixie chopper with the seller, mm. and uh, that would be quite the oh, machine. Yeah, that's as well. right. I forgot he had that. Yeah, that thing's. What are those? Are those like eighty, eighty five hundred dollars to start with? Something like that. No, eighty five hundred actually is the amount we agreed on. Like, it, it, we both left. I was like, would you take eighty? I was like, if Jackie approved it. Would you take 8500 And he's like, I don't know. So that's where it left. And I talked to Jackie, and she's good with it. And he needs to think it over. But that would be the price. New, it's like, I want to say they're like eleven grand, But this one has every upgrade. There's a chute you can open from the seat that they don't all have. It has suspension in the front tires, which is actually kind of a big deal. And it has something else. Like, it has every upgrade. And so it would be it'd probably threaten $12,000 new. Yeah. So, and I, think I don't has, know which but, one my dad has. I just know he's got a Dixie chopper and it's a big, crazy thing. I'll take a look next time. I don't remember. Yeah, this one, it, it's 72 inches, which is as big as they get, I think. And it's their second highest model, the Classic. So if you guys want to look at a Dixie chopper, you know what? I'll. So, uh, I, we should probably move on from house talk because I know not everybody uh, digs it. But I will show you what a 72-inch zero-turn Dixie chopper looks like. Because uh, I think there will be some people... Ooh. Ooh, it's about time. <laughs> uh, this is this is pretty much uh, the scoop. Ice. Fire. I, Fire. I, yeah, we didn't give him a warning though. Um. Anyway, the, I tried to be quick, but I'm still like three seconds behind you. Are you? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. So I'm just trying to find images. 
That's a cool lawnmower. I, I remember when my dad first got it, he was having a lot of fun with it. He was out there like it was it'll spin tires and you know, it's zero turn, so he's spinning around and around with the tires smoking and stuff and Yeah. I don't think I've ever actually ridden it. I backed into it once. That was that was <laughs> This awful. is the world's fastest uh, lawnmower. Um that's like their claim to fame. And I don't know how important that is. Like um uh, it <laughs> I think it's the fastest and it does like 7.3 acres an hour and then the second fastest is 7.2 acres an hour and it's like does that even make a thing and and can you mow it full speed like it maybe they're all the same speed once you hit a bumpy field you know and, and you just can't go Mach 1 the whole way I'm not sure how much it matters but it's a good one and it has 33 horsepower so I was out there riding it today and at top speed with a 72 inch wingspan the motors, I don't, to say it bog sound like it had a problem, but you could tell it didn't run at the same RPM as it did without the motor spinning. Like it, it was being worked and uh, it kept up, but it was being worked. So it made me wonder if like, well, if, if the 33 horsepower one is at the most it can do, maybe I should be overlooking those 23 and 25 horsepower ones. Maybe yeah, that'd be maybe too so. weak. Yeah. So uh, Put some, some racing fuel in there, maybe. Maybe you need to suit that Dixie <laughs> Chopper up. I like the way you're thinking. Well, uh, how about a some supercharger? Work. Yeah, get some engine work done. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Bored out, a little high compression, racing fuel. That's what we did with my uh, rock walker buggy thing. So. I, I, I bet that's been done before. I bet there are people who have like souped their Dixie Choppers up and the things are doing like 45 miles an hour. Have you ever been to lawnmower races? No, I, I know of them. I went my um so when I was doing off roading, I had some <laughs> friends who were real country, I know. and uh, it, and they, <laughs> they're like, "Have you ever been to lawnmower races?" And I was like, "I didn't even know lawnmower racing was a thing." And they would get out there, and it was a little bit like short track dirt racing. Remember Tony Stewart, that guy he killed? And they're like, "Yeah, yeah." They were doing that on lawnmowers. They're spinning sideways, like. Uh, drifting around a dirt course on riding lawnmowers with like special wheels and souped up engines and stuff. And um, it was real neat, like the first 30 minutes or so. And then it got to be real repetitive. I was like, I get it. You know, they, they put them out there. They do like three laps and then the next group and the next group. And they just kept going and going. And uh, it lost its appeal for me. But it's a cool concept. Yeah, how impressive can lawnmower races really be? Like, it's not even going to be close to the worst car race. It's just like, wow, and yet again, these are faster than average. Like, it's, <laughs> I think like, let's a bit of these guys have a nice one. Oh, still faster than average. Not impressive. Like, what are right. they hitting? Like, 50? Um, maybe? I would say 50 would be maybe even... Uh, it's a small track, but I, they were probably going like 30 to 40. For 30 to 50, maybe. And uh, and like Kyle said, there's very... Like, they're wearing helmets, but these are still riding lawnmowers. Yeah, you know, they're not all yeah. caged up and everything. It's not even like a motorcycle where you're like on there, like yeah. you're just kind of sitting in a chair, going fast. <laughs> like <laughs> that would be fun, but they're still going like school zone speeds on yeah. the mower. You fall off that motherfucker, you'll be glad you were only going school zone speeds. You're gonna tumble like eight times before you come to a stop. The, the one I'm on, it's not even that. Fa the, the one I'm looking at buying that we might agree to, um, it's uh, it goes I think like twelve or thirteen miles an hour. And he's like, do you want to ride it? And I'm like, yeah, I guess. He's like, oh, it's cool. Lots of people ride it. Like when people come into the property, that's the thing we do. Like, hey, <laughs> you want to take out the speedy lawnmower? Go for a couple laps? They're like, yeah. It's like an amusement park ride at this house where people will come and do some laps. If you look at it, I don't, I was about to give a big clue away, but um, it people go and ride the lawnmower and just like do circles and stuff. But I, I think I said this before. This is something I'm very excited about doing. He would go out, he'd let the grass grow to like knee high, carve a bunch of loops and like figure eights or maybe a circle, and then they'd take the uh, go-kart they bought their kids and race it like a track. So he mm -hmm. would just carve a track. Oh, that's the, really cool. Yeah, how awesome, is, like that's an awesome way to spend your day. That could yeah. be my yeah. house. Also seems reckless to leave the blades on there during racing though. You know? Uh, <laughs> well, I think they make the track with the lawnmower. Then they had a like a kitty go-kart that they did the racing in. And he had a dirt bike. Uh, he had like a Honda 250 or something like that, or 400. I forget. But yeah, yeah. we used to do that uh, back in the day. Using with, the like, blades like running. So that was Roboty, but yes, indeed. 
<laughs> they used the blades to make a, a racetrack. That, that was the scoop. <laughs> I think it's snowing in um, in Taylor's uh, neck of the woods right yeah, now. That's that. why his. That's all right. I think it's it's kind of amusing. I blame Obama. Thanks, uh, Obama. I do too. I mean, I suppose he's partially to blame for almost any problem you have. Yeah. Mm hmm. He is the president. Yeah. I mean, shit the rolls downhill. The buck stops there, right? The buck stops there, yeah. Yeah. Uh, new topic? Let's see, what else do we have to go to? Um, we got Wings of Redemption uh, renewing his weight loss goals with Drew. Yes. Yee. Um. Uh, a topic I want to handle very carefully. I certainly don't want to uh, say anything discouraging about Wings or Two Wings or anything. It, he's back on the saddle again. I like Drew. Drew is an impressive guy, isn't he? Yeah. It, like and and Drew it, seems like an awesome dude. It seems like what Wings needs is not just a fitness instructor, but a life coach. You know, he's talking to him like, "How did you get out of depression? How did you feel about this? What did you think? Like, what was the process?" that allowed you to be sort of a successful, fully functional adult. And, uh, and you know, maybe the fact that Wings' father wasn't in the picture just means that he's getting more out of this coaching than a normal person would, right? If, if yeah. I had Drew as a coach, I think I'd really need to know about diet, strength, and conditioning, right? Bam, that's your area of expertise. It's an area I need help in. Let's go. But Wings is taking full advantage of this, and, and it's almost like, you know, a life coach thing. It's more than just diet and fitness. And... Yeah, so many people have suggested that Wings get professional therapy, you know, to help him work through his issues. He kind of did. He just picked his own therapist. Yeah. Hey, I saw them. They, they do this part where they talk at the table, and I don't know what's up with that camera angle. That's the worst <sighs> ever, but yeah. regardless, I can still hear them both, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, those talks are usually good, you know. Uh, Drew's telling him things. He, he said something, and I'm paraphrasing it. He, he said basically... Sometimes, because I, I think Wings was saying, you know, how do you find joy in, you know, taking out the trash? How do you, how do you happily, you know, just eat right and work out? And he, and he was basically saying, like, you don't always. Sometimes you don't want to do things. Sometimes you don't want to get out of bed. Sometimes you don't want to go to work. And you just do it. You just do it because you do. And um, I thought that was pretty good. I, yeah. I like that he, he said it's that. It's not even like, a sometimes thing with a lot of stuff, you know. It's like do you, nobody ever wants to eat collard greens or Brussels sprouts, you just do it. Like, nobody's ever fiending for that food, and you never really want to go to the gym, even if you're into it. It's still work. Yeah, you like, don't, it's just shit you have to, to do to be a life. Fun life isn't moving from one pleasure to the next pleasure to the next pleasure in this series of short-term little indulgences. That's not what life is. You make some short-term sacrifices for long-term goals. A, a lot of the things that you do that turn you into a better person in the end are not just you know, pleasure the whole route through. That's, that's not how it is. I, I had a friend whose fiance was an alcoholic and, uh, in her sort of recovery, he's like the things you do every day, like you wake up and you go to work. You don't even think about it. You don't have a decision-making process where you say, huh, should I skip work today? Like you don't. Today's a work day. It's not a decision that you've consciously made. It's an autopilot thing. And with her, it she didn't have that. She had to sort of program herself to just get up and be a productive member of society on a daily basis. And it sounds like Wings is learning that now too. Like you don't just wake up and decide like, huh, should I work? Nah, nah, another day off, another day off. You know, like it, that you don't get to do that. You know, should I eat right? Or should I just have like food all day long, two plates a meal, you know, take out? Like, no, nah, that that you should be on the good behavior should be autopilot that's what everyone else has to do well do you know I, how much time drew is spending with wings because that's going to be just i think it's going to make him like 10 times more successful just to have someone who's not toxic around him and who's mm. also you know kind of holding him accountable like you can't do that no you can't you know i'm not sure i think they're doing a couple days a week is, um, I, is it three or five something like that Oh, maybe it was five. Maybe that was the yeah, thing. Yeah, I think at one point they were talking about five. And um, I think I it's really good for him. I'm glad he's doing that. That's what he's needed all along. Um, I think it's time that we start focusing on the future, though, with FPS Boot Camp Round 2. 
So oh. there are a lot of there are a lot of possible contestants, uh-huh. but a lot of people have pointed out that Chiz would be the perfect contestant as he was one of the naysayers originally when Wings wasn't giving 100%. He was like, you know, if that were me, I'd be giving 1,000%. Mm. I'd be doing this. I'd be I bet doing that. Chiz would you give a thousand percent. You want me to eat five meals a day? Seven? Ten? I'll do it. Whatever you think will work. I'm down. I'm you know. So I'm considering uh, bringing Chiz in because I think I could have a symbiotic relationship with Chiz, in that um, I think he's really good with organizational skills sometimes, and um, I have a lot of like my to-do list keeps getting longer and longer. And if I had somebody around that like you know we could spend two hours boot camping his ass and whipping him into shape and then we could spend like the afternoon with like him like all right Kyle you need to go to the insurance office you need to go get this fixed you need to go with that fixed and you get this fixed I'm like all right when we go do that it'd be good because That's a lot interesting. of interesting my- so he, you would fitness and diet wise whip him into shape and he would get you to be a productive person who contributes to the GDP daily exactly hmm. yeah he'd turn you into a real live adult <laughs> <laughs> a video every week um, have, is he know. even heavy enough anymore to do this? Yeah, or has he yeah. lost enough weight that like it wouldn't yeah, even be a big feat? He's totally up for an FPS boot camp. I, I think and, and you know, he's I bet it'd be I think his weight loss would be uh, just as good as wings because I think he'd give more and um, even though he weighs less, I think he'd he'd knock off a similar amount of weight in a month. Hmm. I think he's somewhere in the mid 200s right now. I don't know, but if you could get him down to around 200, he'd be in pretty good shape. I I don't know what he weighs. Um, for all I know, he's just thri- He was at 285 before. No, was he at 285 or? Th- no, he was at three something before the PKA adventure thing we did, the white water rafting and whatever. And then he got on the ball, and his target was 250. I think he went from maybe 305 to 285. These are PKA numbers, so bear with me. Well, six in my head too, but who knows? There's so three, many numbers. Six in your head. All right, but I know 285 was what he weighed on the PKA adventure, 285. And that was too big a stretch to do the zip line at 250. Um, since then, he could have either stopped going hardcore on the weight loss and stepped up a touch, or he could have just continued on. And for all we know, he actually hit the 250 by now. But, yeah, uh, you know, anywhere in that range, 250 to 285, I, I think he's still a candidate that, that could, you know, take it to the next level at boot camp. Yeah, I think it'd be fun. Uh, I think it'd be fun to do. Uh, I, I um, I, I like having people around the house. Kitty had some friends over for for about a week not too long ago, and it was kind of cool having some people around. Uh, a lot of the, a lot of my um, my employees and my former uh, employees and stuff went on got other jobs, so I don't have as as much of a little <laughs> network around me to like have people to go do stuff. So that that also be nice to have. Uh, you know, someone I could send to do things. Like I think Chase would be good for that too. I don't need to send you to do things, but it has occurred to me like, so my house comes with an extra house. That's a thing. And uh, um, I thought to myself, like, Chiz is talking about moving to Georgia or North Carolina. And it's like, huh, what if we stuck him in the extra house and had him around? The only trouble is he's a smoker. And uh, that doesn't fly. Well, he couldn't smoke outside. No, no, there's no smokers living in any of my houses. That, that's an, Why? That, I, I'm curious now. Like, like, like why, why it can't lingers. It, yeah, I, I, lingers. I suspect that as a smoker, because it'll linger, it'll get everywhere. It, it, it would be all over. It, it like, it, well, just I, what, what would be all over? I, I'm very confused. A smoker's wardrobe existing in your home will make the home smell like cigarettes. A, a smoker who sat in my passenger seat for a while, that passenger seat will smell like a smoker for a brief period of time. It's not permanent, but um. I think that maybe as a smoker, you're pretty forgiving. Like, yeah, it's all right. It doesn't happen. But um, I bet if I walked into a smoker's house where they always smoked outside, I would instantly know smoker's house. I smell it clearly. Maybe so. Mer- oh, yeah. Even if it doesn't reek of smoke, there's still the stale smoke smell that's there. Like the past smoke. And Woody's right. You know, it, like any smoker who lives somewhere, you're going to smell it. They can be walking around with two bottles of Febreze, but it's going to stick. Like, there's just no way. Well, so no smokers allowed. Well, I guess he won't be able to live no. in the guest house out back then. Or he says he's going to stop smoking on January 1st. Try that. Ah, we'll see about that. Be a non-smoker. Okay. It's, uh, it's available to so, everyone and totally free. 
So you'd be okay if he switched to the you know the vaping full time. Oh yeah, I guess I would be. That I, stuff um, smells like vanilla, dude. Like it smells like candy when it comes to that. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I probably everyone and be like strawberries. Chiz was here. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Probably <laughs> everyone bad. smelled vape by now, but if you haven't, it really is uh, the way they sell it. Even if there's nicotine in the vape, it it it's like it's water coming out. It doesn't. It doesn't seem to do the same things. I've been in a car with vapors. It might have been Kyle. And Kyle will sit there and vape in the car. And as someone who is as adamantly anti-smoking as I am, you just have nothing to complain about with, with regards to vaping. It, it, I'm going to order a new vaporizer as soon as we get off the show. I want a new one. I like it. Yeah, you could quit. I saw Chiz got... Um, I'm just ignoring that. I saw Chiz <laughs> got... Uh, he ordered... <laughs> crazy vaporizer uh, one that would do like a lot like big clouds of smoke or whatever mm -hmm. i'm gonna get i'm gonna get one i'm gonna get a cool one like nothing mm -hmm. like too crazy something like 70 bucks or something i'm like i'm gonna I was, one i'm glad you said that. i was gonna ask like what does a high-end vape cost 70 dollars maybe oh i bet you could like waste your money i feel like any hobby like 500 dollars you can sink 500 dollars in pretty easy i bet if i wanted to i could get a couple hundred dollars worth of vape bullshit but i'm gonna get something like 60 to 70 dollars or something like a good a well-made one that'll do what I want, but so it doesn't look like a flute. The first vape, vape I saw you have, um, it was about cigarette size, and I think it charged via a USB port. What yeah. does something like that cost? Oh, that's cheap. You get that at like the... Oh, actually, I think... They sell those at the gas stations. Yeah, they sell those at the gas stations. The one I had was a whole kit and came with the whole thing, and it seemed like it was more expensive, like 20 or $30 or something. But you can get just like they look like little individual vaporizer things that are like one use or whatever mm -hmm. for um, I don't know they're like the cost of a pack of cigarettes I think like six seven bucks. Hmm. Yeah, like those blue ones where but like glows not, when you yeah. smoke it. Yeah, I had that. But what I want is like one of the big vaporizers where you've got a bottle of the liquid that you put in there and all that stuff. You can actually see it like. I don't know, vaporizing. You can, it's, got, it's got a tank and a filament and all kinds of little parts on it. Um, it, it sounds like you're giving up portability with a machine like that. Yes, no? Um, it depends. I, uh, maybe. I, I don't think I want to be like driving down the road. Yeah, I'd use it in my car and, and yeah. in my house, but I probably wouldn't like pull it out of my pocket like a fucking clarinet screwing a suppressor. <laughs> on <it. laughs> hey, guys, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind the strawberries and shortcakes. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, because the the one that I saw you with, you literally could do that. Like it, it wasn't any more. Um, I'm looking for a better word than conspicuous. Like it didn't show more than a cigarette did. It, yeah, it's the same size as a cigarette. When you puff on it, the end lights up blue, and you know it's just a and, little water vapor and it's gone. And the vapor cloud yeah. is, is cigarette sized, you know, except that it's just water. Yeah, so. and you could totally like 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 blow it down in your shirt if you didn't want to offend everyone with your secondhand water vapor. Your water vapor. <laughs> yeah, because I guess you could. Well, there are those, and then there are the ones that people have, where they're so big that like it it it's like six smokers standing around with regular cigarettes. You know, it dissipates really fast because it's water vapor, but it's still like Jesus Christ. Can you not do that inside? Like <laughs> I don't want to know where your lung air was, and knowing that I'm breathing your lung air. Let us just know we share air on any, on the inside. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's really what I'm going for. I want something because what I like is the, the hit you get from like a thick cloud of the vapor, I think. Like I've smoked um, Mike's girlfriend's brother. He had one that was like that. He had like $180 in his, I think. He had multiple parts and uh, it was like an AR-15 for him. He liked adjusting <laughs> and tweaking it out. So like, and he had like monster energy drink uh, flavored like nicotine stuff in there, and you'd hit this thing, and it was just like, and you'd exhale, and it was just like a thick cloud of vapor, and it hit really hard like a cigarette or something, and yeah, I was like, yeah, I could get on board with this. This is pretty cool, but I've just never bothered to get one. I think I will though, because mm -hmm. I know I know Chiz did, and um, it seems cheaper than cigarettes. It che it seems um, it definitely seems like you would smell less, and. Uh, I don't know. Oh, you definitely, definitely smell less. Yeah, definitely, of, no doubt. Uh, I think I think Kitty got one too. Actually, Kitty's got one, but she's got a um. What what does hers even look like? I haven't seen it. Oh, she's got one that looks like a magic wand. You like push on the bottom of it. I don't know how to describe it any better than that. It's like a cylinder about six inches long with a weird metal attachment on the bottom that you. That's the trigger. It's kind of funky looking. 
You guys want a new topic? Yeah. So I have two here, because I brought a backup in case Kyle wants to quickly change. You just mentioned your ex-girlfriend. Kyle broke up with the beautiful girl. Is that a topic we can cover, or should I go to topic two? I'm trying to break up with her. I, I don't think we should be together, but she keeps kind of, like, coming back, and I'm like, no, it's the end, and, and she keeps trying to come back more, and I, I I don't know what to do. I'm literally about to have to beat her off with a stick. I don't know what to do. I, I met I, her. What has she been doing when she comes back to you? To well, she's just, texting, really. she's just texting, really, like, like you know, like, wanting me to explain and more and more why I want it to end and I'm I'm trying to spare her feelings by not being too blunt about it but I've made it very clear that like uh -huh. oh, this isn't going to work you should go back to where you're from like this is this is kind of over this isn't working she's not making like unsolicited booty calls or anything just showing up wanting to fuck No this is all pretty recent like I'd be okay with that I'd be okay with just dating I just I, 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 but but I don't I don't want a girlfriend like I don't want somebody who like like you know like is going to be texting me saying, "Hey, why haven't you texted me in two days?" Like, if I, it, I just don't. I'm sorry if that. I'm lazy when it comes to relationships, and I'm not looking for that. I want to be able to go a couple days without texting you and it not being a big deal, because uh, you know nothing's happened in my world that you need to know about, and I doubt anything too interesting has happened where you are. So, if that changes, we'll we'll we'll, we'll get in touch with each other. But regardless, I'm I'm getting carried away here, but. Uh, yeah, trying to break up with her, but but um, and hopefully I I do end up broken up with her because I don't mm. want to I don't want her to be my girlfriend anymore. What She's would you say that you woman. hate most about her? <laughs> <laughs> um, what do I hate most about her? Three things. Uh, I know you won't be able to narrow it down. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Three things that you hate most about her. Um, in certain social situations, she seems like she has a hard time. Um, it, it, go her, on. Her sense of humor is is a little lacking, and um, um, in certain topics, I feel like she just doesn't have a lot to add. She was all... super quiet. So I met her, um, but I keep saying beautiful. I don't know if it's getting through, but um, but to talk to her, like I she's, was, she's very good looking. I was dragging conversation out of her. It, it was like, you know, where are you from? What are you doing? Like, what do you do for work? How do you like that? You got a new apartment. How's that going? Have you lived outside the like away from parents before? And like it, everything was like one word answers, sort of shut down. I mean, it wasn't like I wasn't getting this with this guy stop talking to me vibe. I was just getting more of a like I I'm not a natural at holding a conversation type thing. Like it, she she was on the extreme end of I don't want to say anti-social. I've talked to her about. I've talked to her about that. She says she's just nervous in those situations, so maybe that's that's part of the thing. Um, but I was she's, really nice. Like it wasn't a I, pressurized situation. Yeah, I, I think it was to her. She we just didn't realize it. I think that that's what she said anyway. But I, I want to go on. It wasn't me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah. You weren't I, leaning in real close, being like, "What perfume are you wearing?" <laughs> like that. Oh, nothing just, like that. You know, you know, it's very much like, hey, I'm Kyle's friend. Kind of what are you, you know, who are you? What are you up to? How do you like it here? You know, you, you just moved. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so, so probably will soon be my my, my ex-girlfriend. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. Like, I don't think she's texted me today in, in a while. But, but yeah, just just think it should be over. Um, don't want to carry on a serious relationship with her anymore. That's, and I never really did. She just kind of kept dragging it out of me, and I was very honest and clear from the start. And uh, she just kept taking more and more, and I'm I'm done giving. So, yeah. yeah. Soon to have another ex girlfriend. She would have liked hypothetical single young Woody, because I was uh, all about like the serious relationship, the talking every day, the next you know seeing if this fits, go to the next level type thing. Uh, I was wired differently than you are. Mm. Oh, not at, at your age. I was married with kids, so that wouldn't <laughs> <make> fit. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, Hope was like two. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds rough. <sighs> <sighs> Have a little panic attack. After something. <laughs> I don't think I would. I, I, that's not for me. Yeah, that's, that's not the fit for me. That's You're too more much the uncle type. I am more the uncle type. I feel like that's too much responsibility for me. I feel like I, could, I would rise to the occasion if required, but I just, I'm not interested in that right now at this point in my life. Like, I mean, next week I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm, I can't, I'm not allowed to say what I'm doing, but I'm doing some really cool shit next month. Like, like I'm flying somewhere and I'm, 
I'm going to use a thing that's really cool to like break some other cool things, and it's going to be great. Oh, spare the details. <laughs> 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 I'm flying, I'm doing a thing, I'm using this cool stuff. Tune in. It's like, probably <laughs> Probably some tanks involved. The way certain contracts are written, I'm not supposed to talk about things. But but you know, we're gonna do some cool shit. And you know, I, I, playing with some body armor like in ten days. You know, like that's the stuff I like to do. I like to get machine guns out and shoot body armor on mannequins riding lawnmowers. I, I'm not interested in settling down and worrying about getting baby cribs. I want to get AR-15s. Like that's just not for me. I, I, and as far as I don't know. I, I'm. I don't think I'd be very good at the monogamy thing. I, I haven't been traditionally. Um, it's not that I'm unfaithful. It's just that, you know, it's. I, I'm not looking to start a relationship in which faith would be an issue. That's my thing. Like, what does like, that mean? That means I would rather. I would like a more casual relationship with a with a girl in which I'm allowed to like have other girls. Like that. That's like an what, open relationship. I'm sort of. I prefer the term part-term girlfriend, in which you know, sort of like when when we're together, you know, she's my girlfriend, but she can go do her own thing, and I'll do my own thing, and we just don't need to discuss the rest. I prefer. That's something. just a friends with benefits. There you go. But very <laughs> good friends. But very good friends. Like like you know, I I I'm up to cuddle and like buy you Christmas gifts and like. You know, literally be sort of boyfriend and girlfriend when we're together. I'm I'm up for all that. It's not like I'm just like all about just like wanting to get laid. Like I want a relationship, but only when we're together. Like the the the, the maintenance part of the relationship where there's a lot of texting and like a lot of propping up your feelings and and like sparing your feelings and making sure that everybody's happy and singing kumbaya. Like I don't want any of that bullshit. Like I don't want to have to like maintain this uh, this relationship at all. I, it should just stand on its own. Uh, stand on its own merits, you know. We, when we see each other, we have a great time together, and let's just leave it at that. What do you think of this, Taylor? You, you and these other four girls. Uh, will I ever have? I don't know. I, yeah. Probably not. Like I, I'm strong. Like right now, I'd say like 95 percent in the negative is how I'm feeling. Like there's like a five percent part of me that's like, oh, it'd be cool to have a mini me, but nah, it's so fucking expensive. I could I could buy like kids cost like a two hundred thousand quarter million dollars or something, especially if you're going to put it in college. So I'd much rather have like a Ferrari, wouldn't you? I would as well. I'm kind of in your boat with the no kids thing, but I'm still so young I probably don't have the wherewithal to know whether or not I want to. Yeah, yeah I, I'm fully open to that possibility as well. I, I'm fully open to the possibility that I'll turn 33, 35, 42 and I'll say, man, I really want a little Kyle. That could happen, but right now I don't want a fucking little Kyle. Like... Um, I don't want I don't want any children. I don't want anybody to like look up to me. I don't want to have to be anything other than what I am, and you know, look out for me. And me and my, you know, there's it's not just all about me. I, it sounds pretty selfish. But at that like, point, it's sort of a me and mine scenario, you know, my uh, like that. I, I don't want to add any more mother, any other mouths to feed, any uh, anything like that. See, I'm I like my little tribe. Of, of people and, and and I wouldn't have a friend in my life that didn't want me to be successful and uh, like like I, I don't know if if I landed a million dollar sponsorship on my channel I think Kyle would say that's awesome you know good for you Woody you got a good thing there I'm happy for you and when Kyle lands them all the time on his channel I'm happy for him right like it's it, good right I'm not there are people in the world who secretly are bummed out you got it and um uh you know, i don't know i, 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 I think if we're being honest it. everybody is a little bit like that I, to an extent between jealous, even so, if it's for your friends it, there's a difference between jealousy and envy though I, I think jealousy is when you um is when you actually want what the other person has and you want to take it from them and, and envy is when you wish you had it yeah so, i thought that was some of Kyle's envy. guns you know, like uh, Kyle will have, like Kyle has a fully auto AK-47. It's just cool, cooler than anything I have. But I don't like resent him having it. I just, just have it as a goal of my own, you know, and, and that's okay. But the, the, the people in your life should be genuinely happy and celebrate your accomplishments with you, and they should be boosting you up to help you get your own. If uh, if you got someone in your life who kind of tears you down and says you know that guy's not really good, I don't know why he's getting all that. Um, and and uh, what I keep avoiding say that's what Wings would do. That's what Wings used to do to us. Uh, if if we had something go right, 
he would not be happy that that, that something went right for uh, us. Ah, yeah. I, I always, I mean, I always made sure I didn't even talk about stuff like that around wings because I know you couldn't really. Although I will say this, like, there's been times when um, I've seen him like go jump to my defense on his channel and, and really selflessly defend me or say like like when That's I got true. the Call of Duty, when I got the Call of Duty commercial, he seemed genuinely happy for me. Um, yeah, but th there's been. Just many he, more yeah, incidents. He, he, he made a video. He was like, oh, I saw FPS Russia was in the Call of Duty commercial, and that's great, and blah, 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 and the Call of Duty community, and we sent somebody, and they're in the commercial, and that was cool he said that. So, so That's true. That's true. He's done both, I guess. He's done both. He's done but, both. You know, nobody's nobody's perfect. He, he had a history of being a little shitty sometimes when it came to that sort of thing, but it, it wasn't all bad. True, true. But, but um, you know, the, the thing that I get from a wife back on that topic it is like i don't know it's a real partner it's someone who makes you better than you would have been on you know, solo and i think that's what your ex-girlfriend was looking for too not just a hey while we're together we're buds and we hang out and we like each other and then when we're not together it's you know every man for himself right that that's what you offer right now that's what you like you know they have a part-time girlfriend boyfriend thing what she wants is a a life partner that turns her into the super her that that you know that this is a full on engaged like you know partnership where the two of you are together all the time trying to achieve a common super goal and uh that that i like that but you know you might be like you know that's an awful lot of work and support and stuff and i'd rather she's, just do me she's just not the one i want the, she's she's not the one i would want to be my partner for a journey like that but i don't know yeah. that you're open to that like i i've, I've talked to you about this topic before and you're like ah, it's not the journey i feel like taking uh i don't know i i I'm, i might have with the girlfriend before this one like okay i, I might I, I i i probably you know i was i was prepared to move in with her and buy a house with her and all that stuff um just just not this one um i don't think no okay how often, or Woody, if ever, are you ever just doing something and it aggravates you to be married and you're just like, God, what if I never got married? Like, do you ever dwell on that? Ever? Um, Maybe you aren't at liberty to say because you are married and she's probably <laughs> listening. No, I'll but, be 100% honest. Uh, never in the relationship part of it, right? I, I never think like, man, I wish I had the uh, freedom of a single person or like, I, I wish I had the, the, you know, schedule of a non-father. Like, like that stuff is not, not ever really, like, I'm always happy that I've done those things. Um, it used to sometimes cross my mind, like, so I'm pulling this train financially, right? And I would think to myself, I'd have a lot of money saved if I wasn't feeding these three, <laughs> you know, and you know, like, like if all the money I earned just went toward me, that would be an amazing situation. Uh, you know, as of now, I, I feel like I'm fine money wise, but, um, like that's, that's the only thought that's crossed my mind. Like, you know, it, it if I was a, a race car instead of the front engine of a locomotive, you know, in terms of like pulling things around, how easy this would be, you know, I, um, that's crossed my mind. But then again, I don't know if I'd be very successful without Jackie. She's, she's almost, you see her on stream and stuff. She's like a pit crew, you know? She brings in food and fuel and support and love. And, and uh, you know, they're, they're, she's bringing a whole lot to the table. I don't know who I'd be if I was just like a single slovenly version of me, you know, haphazardly caring for everything else. You know, I, I get to be single focused. Mm. So, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, well, maybe I'll eventually find someone who is more of a uh, a Jackie and less of a um, you know who. You need a pit crew. <laughs> who turns a you in? It, actually, maybe Doctor Chiz will be your pit crew. Maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I need a crew chief. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, crew chief. All uh, right. I'm gonna switch yeah. team. Yeah. Yeah. What did you say, Merka? <laughs> I was saying he's gonna switch teams, as in he and Chiz are gonna. <laughs> oh, okay, it got Chiz it, like, it was lost. I, I, Chiz looks like a power bottom to me. I don't know. I, I I think I think that could work too. I can see it. I can. Oh shit! I saw it. Oh no. <laughs> Would you say you're a power <laughs> or more of a power top, or a, a a feeble top, a nice twink, right? I'm gonna. I don't know the terminologies. <laughs> I don't know what you asked. What would you be if you were gay? Oh, um... Which, which subcategory of gay would you be? Would you I gain would... some weight, get big and hairy? 
No, I, I don't think so. I think I would. Um, hmm. I don't know. I, guess I think I'd would catch be, and I mean, receive and expect the same from my partner. Yours. It's it's really hard to say because like I I guess I'm tempted to say that I would be some sort of top who was into very like uh, feminine effeminate guys, but then you're not very uh, gay. Then that's not very gay. You that's suck that's at being more gay. like. That's more like asking me, like, 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 all right, you gotta fuck a guy. Which one you gonna fuck? Well, that's that one kind of looks like a girl. I, I think <laughs> yeah. that the ideal gay guy and, and the one I'd aspire to be would catch and receive, and yeah. uh, you know, to have the the every tool in his box, and he'd be willing to use them. Versatile. Mm-hmm. Believe that is the term. That's how you should be. <laughs> hmm. Well, I guess that doesn't make sense. You, you could know, be you're bi, bi, you could be a versatile you could be a versatile bisexual, and then you've got it all covered. Yes. Now I I'm a little mixed up on some of the terms, like a versatile bisexual, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how that's different than a pansexual. And bisexual and pansexual seem mm -hmm. very similar to me. Pansexual is what people call themselves if they want to be more different than a bisexual person and they establish their self-worth by, you know, coming up with titles and different <laughs> names. Things I, that make themselves seem special without actually having to exhibit anything that makes them special. I don't know <laughs> enough about that to, uh, to, 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 to comment, but, um, but a bisexual in my... Not either. Just do it. To, to the best of my <laughs> someone who is equally into men and women regardless of their own sex and... Uh, you know the versatile part in, implies that they could both bottom or top in the uh, the homosexual relationship. Yeah. Oh, is that what versatile means? Yes. I must have missed that when you said it. Okay. <laughs> I <laughs> learning something. You know. But there's more, right? Like yeah. there's cis. Taylor's Taylor's a total otter. An otter. Yeah. I I only know what that is because if it's always sunny in Philadelphia, it's the yeah. only time I've heard that. Term. What's an otter? I don't remember what the definition is. It's though. uh, it's like a oh, bear, wait. only not as. Uh, I'm on a show uh, with people who uh, we do an internet-based podcast, and they don't have internet connections. <laughs> you know what? He like like I I I I've been saying for years we should be meeting up somewhere, doing this in a lair, perhaps a bunker. Um, everybody always shoots me down. I don't know what to say. This is I the best stick you to a little house. I have in my area. This, this is, this is all there it, is. It's not your fault, clearly. And and there's an internet thing like, oh, you bought a Walmart connection, and it's like, can we all just get past that? No one's getting their connection from Walmart. No one intentionally chose the bad connection. Everyone that I'm aware of, especially people who are into gaming, bought the best connection they could buy for their house, and they just, you know, weren't in a position. They just to suck. To buy, like, to, to schedule their house in a spot that would have good internet. And in Kyle's spot in particular, they checked in advance. And they were supposed to pull fiber to the house. And then after they bought it, they didn't. What can he do? It's a real shame. It's, yeah. it's, uh, it's a real shame. You got hoodwinked, Kyle. Yeah, I, I agree. would be curious what uh, it would cost. Like... Well, I, I mean, at this point, it doesn't even matter. Like, like I don't understand why... Why? So, I think it might be Google Hangouts, partly. Because, like, I Skype with people all the time, and we both have excellent pic picture quality. Like, like it's, mm -hmm. it, it comes across nicely over Skype when there's just two, two people. Like, I don't know what's going on. It seems like Google Hangouts is notoriously kind of bad for quality. Because oftentimes, even though I've got 14 download, and I don't have anything else going on on my, um, you know, on my, on my line... You'll come to me in like really pixelated quality, which doesn't even make any sense. Hmm. Maybe maybe it's Google Hangouts. I, I um. We've looked into other stuff, like for the uh, for the Patreon Hangout. If people don't know, uh, there's a Patreon level where we hang out with subscribers and talk and and chill and do our thing. Uh, Patreon link in the description if that interests you. And uh, for that, we use WebEx. Because it can do up to 50 people, you know, and we don't want anyone to get turned. We had a, a month once when people got turned away on Google Hangouts, and we don't want that to happen. So, uh, um, anyway, <laughs> Kyle just put a link in it, distracted me a little bit. But uh, um, that, do we have the problem in WebEx? Um, your quality is actually really good in WebEx. Huh. Uh, but it's not formatted remember. right. We couldn't do what we do here and, like, screen grab and put it on mm. stuff. Yeah. Well, 
I don't know. I think it has to be Google Plus because I've I am not having problems with my internet in any other regard. Like playing video games online, I'm getting fine connections. Streaming movies, TV, games online, like it's all fine. It's just this fucking hangout. <laughs> That's well, maybe awful. we'll look for alternatives then. And um, now you're still listening to me. I finished talking five seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're from our, the past. So Kyle, we talked on was it PKA or PKN? PKN. Yeah, it. W- I was saying that. My position was this, and it's not an educated one. Uh, that's, that's where I like to be. And uh, I was saying that Native American Indians got a very raw deal a couple hundred years ago. But the fact that their culture hasn't thrived recently is more cultural than you know the white man holding them down. As a matter of fact, they get a lot of benefits. You know, there's a lot of scholarships to get them into colleges and, and you know, low taxes and tax-free reservations and stuff like that that uh, that give them advantages that everyone else doesn't have. But what they're doing, in my opinion, was uh, kind of clinging to the past to some extent and wanting to live the lifestyle that existed a couple hundred years ago, which today looks like full-on ridiculous poverty. Like, you know, oh my God, these people are like pooping outdoors and living off the land and, you know, it's so bad because they don't have awesome internet. But it it's a choice to me. So Kyle has an article here that proves me wrong. Um. Well, I don't even think like your your, your vision of like how they live is right. You know, they they live in okay. these little crappy towns and little communities. You know, they have regular houses. These guys aren't trying to live in teepees. They're just poor people. Like they're living a modern lifestyle. They're just stuck on this reservation trap. So I'll read directly from this article. I suppose it's um, it's called Five Ways the the Government Keeps Native Americans in Poverty. Uh, it's uh, it's on Forbes website but I don't see um, I don't see like a, a bu- like bullet points like five reasons so I'll just read from the top uh, one such difficulty is fractioned land ownership federal inheritance laws required many Indian lands to be passed in equal shares to multiple heirs after several generations these lands have become so fractioned that there are over uh, there are often hundreds of owners per parcel managing these fractioned lands is nearly impossible and much of the lands remain idle um, uh, with the energy resources, it said, uh, Darren Old Coyote, that's the guy's name, chairman of the Crow Tribe in Montana, puts it plainly, the war on coal is a war on our families and our children. Coal provides the greatest economic opportunity for our impoverished tribe, but regulations are making it hard for the tribe to capitalize on our natural resources. Some are even trying to prevent the tribe from exporting coal to Asia. Um... Tribes historically had little or no control over their energy resources. Royalties were set by the Bureau of Indian Affairs, but the agency uh, consistently undervalued Indian resources. A federal commission concluded in 1977 that leases negotiated on behalf of Indians were, quote, amongst the poorest agreements ever made. Unfortunately, it hasn't gotten much better. A recent class action lawsuit alleged that the government mismanaged billions of dollars in Indian assets. The case settled in 2009 for $3.4 billion, Far less than what was lost by the feds. Uh, reservations. So, can... I I I feel like to sum this up, the Indians were given, a given a bunch of energy rich land, right? In in particular, it had coal deposits on it, and now they're not getting like the Saudi Arabia treatment where they're getting coal royalties on this land that they live on. Or they are, but they're just not awesome contracts. Well, they're not allowed to handle their own business dealings on the resources. The federal government wants to handle it for them. And then, like, it, there, there's a lot of reasons that these people have been held back. I mean, even they're, they got, you say they were given this land. It, you know, they don't even, that's not fair to say. They were given the shittiest land we had to give. They were given, like, de- corners of desert and chunks of Montana, like like just nothingness. And they were, a lot of times they, these were farmers that were thrown out in the desert, and so they, they got hooked up on this like government food program that's made uh, the Native Americans some of the least physically fit Americans among us. They are incredibly Is that, that they have know that. Yeah, because they've been like, like you look at some of the quote unquote traditional um, like foods that they 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 cook. When I go to the Southwest, you'll I'll see stuff like fried breads and shit like that, and it's all because of like. The fried bread products that they get, the bread that they would get from the uh, the government, they had to come up with all different ways, to, like use like two or three ingredients, and one of them was frying it. Uh, 
They've been held back at every turn. We've been fucking those people so every which part way. Part of the but... way we fuck them is we give them free food. Another way we fuck them is the free land isn't good enough. Um, are there any other freebies we fuck them with? We well, we gave them all that free ammunition, you know, at, at two thousand feet per second. Though we 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 we, we massacred those people, man. Mm -hmm. We we stole all their land from them, and then we. No one says that we were. I was going to say nice, but no, we weren't even decent to them, right? I mean, we considered them, we, like I had anything to do with it, but they were considered savages in the 17 and 1800s, and uh, the white people just wiped them out. They were technologically advanced by comparison, and they t wiped them out like they were buffalo. It was very mean, and uh, and they had no sympathy for them, um, they, as if they were a whole other race. Uh, but since then... They just haven't really said, like, all right, so what can we do now? Like, the Jewish race was treated really poorly um, 60 years ago. Is my math right? No, 70 years ago, something like that. And uh, the 1940s, right? Um, World War II. Millions of them killed, slaughtered. And, uh, you know, it, it's not like they're saying, like, oh, man, you know, we're not going to get an education. We're not going to pull ourselves out of this. Like, you, you don't see that. I feel so, like it's a cultural issue. Well, there was a culture for Jewish people to assimilate back into. Yeah, you know, they, they uh, went more their easily country. than there was a culture for Native Americans to penetrate and then assimilate into. There's so, already so much stigma about it, and I think most of them died from disease, right? So, like, their populations were just so, so diminished. And that I really don't know enough about the subject. And the Trail of Tears. So here's a little bit more from the article. It says, um, Chief Justice John Marshall set Native Americans on the path to poverty in 1831 when he characterized the relationship between Indians and the government as, quote, resembling that of a ward to his guardian. Um, I scrolled down too far. With these words, Marshall established the Federal Trust Doctrine, which assigns the government as the trustee of Indian affairs. That trusteeship continues today, but, is not, uh, but it has not served the Indians well. Underlying this doctrine is the notion that the tribes are not capable of owning or managing their lands. The government is the legal owner of all lands and assets in Indian country and is required to manage them for the benefit of the Indians. But because Indians do not generally own their land or homes on reservations, they cannot mortgage their assets for loans like other Americans. This makes it incredibly difficult to start a business in Indian country. Uh, even tribes with valuable natural resources remain locked in poverty. The resources amount to dead capital, unable to, to uh, generate growth for the tribal communities. All development projects on Indian land must be reviewed and authorized by the government, a process that is notoriously slow and burdensome. On Indian lands, companies must go, must, uh, go through at least four federal agencies and 49 steps to acquire a permit for energy development. Off the reservation, it only takes four steps. This bureaucracy prevents tribes from capitalizing on the resources. It's not uncommon uh, for years to pass before the necessary approvals are, are acquired to begin energy development on Indian lands, a process that takes only a few months on private lands. At any time, an agency may demand more information or shut down development. Simply completing, completing a title search can cause delays. Indians have waited six years to receive title search reports that other Americans can get in just a few days. So the it's result, a cumbersome process so to start a business on hamstrung the ability for private enterprise there, right? On Indian land, like it, it basically what they're what they're saying is, you know what? There's a difficult and cumbersome process to start up to fire up this stuff on free land. The rent-free land that we're giving them, it, it it's basically that it's rent-free land, but they don't get to own it and you know sell the energy resources and mine it and all the things that ownership would give you. It's just rent-free. It, it's it's free to use. But it's not yours. It's just free to use for you and your generations, and it goes on and on and on. Um, that's a better deal than anyone on this call got. No one gave me free to use land. No one gave me. They, they're like, you know what? It takes an awful long time for me to prop I mean, up a house what on is this free it? land. What, what is it? No, 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 no. no. It's just it, it seems like land ownership when you put it like that. Enough, but really, land ownership is more than a pet, a place to stay. Sorry, it's, it's 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 more than that. It's. It's the ability to mortgage it to say it's yours. It's not really theirs. It's Where like, did I get the free land to mortgage and call? You know, like I, I, no one gave me free anything. If you, you don't think your father helped you a little in he life, did, of like, course like, he I'm did. I'm not saying he but, opened his wallet and, and and handed you your future, but 
but but but in some way he he was because of his because he was established a little you you dug in a little more and you became even more established that's and that's a clearly true although not clear true it, like my father didn't have that now I did right so don't don't take this as I right. bet you now you've told me how how bad your grandfather was and mm -hmm. while I agree shitty fucking dad something came from him that that he provided or or his family provided for your dad like your dad wasn't just like a street rat like Aladdin. For for people who didn't hear P, P, didn't hear PKN, my father's father was a dreadful guy. He beat the wife. He beat the kids. He um he was a drunk. He was a, a full on alcoholic, and uh, and when he ran away from the family, my dad was ten at the time. My dad was just really happy about it. It was like, ah, oh, that's one fewer problem. One of the funny tales they tell, and I mentioned this on PKN, oh, yeah. is uh, I guess he threw my father at the wall. And he landed in between the vertical studs, and then he just sort of sat in the drywall, like, ha, 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 isn't this funny? We made a chair. Like, th this is one of the charming stories from my father's childhood. Um, he was bad, right? It's full on, not bringing... And my father was raised by his mother, single mom, at a time when that wasn't that common. And uh, she was a cashier at JCPenney's, which is like a Macy's... Uh, I guess a modern day equivalent would be like a target cashier and um, uh, that she raised the family on that. So, um, no, I, I would push back on the notion that this guy provided anything. As a matter of fact, I think he took more than he gave. Perhaps. Yeah. But I, I, I still think that there are many ways in which the Native Americans have been held back. Because it, it, just at every turn, I, you I, don't. If, that if we have a culture enough. saying you're holding us back by not giving us enough, we've got an issue. We need a no. Culture. I don't think they want to be given anything. It's I like mean, I'm reading an graphic. article that says I can't take a mortgage out on the free land you gave me. It, right. it, it, that's not fair. Like, like, it's not mm -hmm. theirs. They didn't give it to them. They said they can stay it's there, but free. it's not theirs. It's rent free. Yeah. That's a prison. That's what a prison is. Yeah, you can stay in that cell. That's your cell. That's uh, yours. Well, the you difference between a prison there. and an Indian reservation is the ability to leave, right? They can always just... Yeah, they eventually gave them that. Eventually, hundreds of years ago. I mean, it, it wasn't a prison. I don't think they had it hundreds of years ago. I, I bet it wasn't all that long ago where they weren't allowed... Uh, I wonder when that was, because in my head, like, even from the start, they didn't have to stay there. Like, oh, they, they had to stay or they'd shoot them. Oh, uh, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. They but, were uh, rounding it, them up back in those days. It's certainly not a recent thing. Like I bet by no. 1900, even they were allowed to yeah. get out. You know, we're I'd talking say, yeah. 114, 115 years ago. They were able to do anything they wanted, and uh, you know, I'm hearing that like, hey, the free food isn't healthy enough, and the free land isn't really free because it's just rent free, and the you know, like like these things. And I'm like, man, I there's a cultural issue holding these these guys back they're, they're just not excelling on their own and, and they're looking for benefits that no one else gets i think they just i think that they should be able to own I, that land right I, like i think that they should own the land but when you sounds good but the fact that the government has basically hamstrung any attempt at private enterprise in those areas means there aren't going to be good companies for them to work for there isn't going to be the opportunity to network to get ahead they're just kind of born into a shit area, and there's not much opportunity to get out. I wonder like, I, what I don't they'd say know if that happened. About this. If we gave the, the land to the to essentially, let's pretend it was like a squatters type thing, right? And said, all right, whoever's there now gets the land. Bam. You know, these are the property lands, etc. It's all given away. In 50 years, there'll be no more Indian reservations. They'll sell it off. Different people will move in. You know, they'll, they, maybe they'll mismanage money because they haven't had it in the past, right? That's a real common thing. And, um, you know, get a little be, fire water in them, make a few bad decisions. It'll be gentrified and there'll be no more Indian reservation. The whole culture will be completely gone. That's, you know that, that's, I think, the reality of what would happen if we just let them do anything they wanted with the land. Do you remember the old story about how much they sold the island of Manhattan for? Uh, what was it, like a couple of beads? and? It was a chest full of beads. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. I, beads? I remember... Beads, glass so beads. They, the... they had beads, didn't they? Not glass. <laughs> so here's the deal. Like, um, 
the Indians is it is that even politically integrated correct to say like the, the Native American Indians Native or Americans. whatever um Native Americans yeah yeah they had no concept of land ownership right so to them they were getting beads in exchange for nothing like I'm buying this land from you and they're like really you're buying land like no one buys the land yeah, we all buy live land here. Buy hey, the sky you what. too hey you know what the sky is another barrel of beads I was, I was just about to say that I'll sell you <laughs> the sky if you want you know like. <laughs> and and to us, I guess I probably wouldn't be silly enough to sell my sky, <laughs> so I'd get fucked over. But but um yeah, to them it's like yeah, people don't own land. You know, to just to get anything in exchange for this free nothing is is fine with me. And and that's how they got those ridiculously terrible deals. And uh, perhaps it's to their detriment to not have figured that out a little quicker. Well, that deal differs from some of the later deals that were like. That deal was probably from like some I don't know who made that deal with them, mm -hmm. but, but later on there were deals with presidents of the United States, with 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 generals, with with like with the U.S. government that were just reneged upon and just torn up when we needed to tear them. Oh, there's oil on that land we gave them. Well, we'll just scoot this property line back a little more. All right, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah give them that shitty part over there with the mountain on it. That the mountain of doom. Yeah, that one. That's yours. <laughs> hey, 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 Blackfoot. That's your fire mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. hey Blackfoot, <laughs> can I just you in Mordor? <laughs> That's, That's what I feel like it, they did. They gave the Indians Mordor and they took the Shire and uh, it's it's just not fair. I I I hear you. I, I just And hey, I'm not wanting to pay them off. I don't want to give them anything. Like like fuck those dirty Indians, right? I'm just saying. <laughs> We can't held them back that hard. one. But like, but like, the, I I just in my head it's like dude how about you just start existing under the same rules everyone exists under? Go to school, get a job, buy a buy, buy a house, upgrade your house 10 years later, get yourself a car, and, and don't exist under this rule of someone's holding me back, my food's not healthy enough, I don't properly own the land, I get rent free. Like, not just, just go achieve on your own, right? Everyone else has to do that. I think it's harder for them. I don't I doubt do. it. I, I think it's, it's, it's harder I mean, for them than for me. So it puts me in a particularly rough spot, right? Because I wasn't raised in a, an abusive household. My parents loved each other. They're still married today. And, you know, they could, I, I never pretended that, like, you know, I'm against all odds of my parents' loving relationship and healthy meals on the table through my whole kid. I still managed to finish college. Um, but, uh, but my dad did do that. And, you know, if it were him here, he could be saying, what? No, you don't need handouts. You can just yeah, work my, harder. My dad would probably feel the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, my, dad, my dad talked about, you know, just being just absolute dirt poor, you know, no electricity and heat and, they, you know, taking bricks out of the fireplace to put in the bed for warmth and being able to see through the walls and see the stars and, and all that bullshit. And he talked about, you know, building a credit history from the tiniest of items you could borrow money for, like, you know, a used four-wheeler. Until you know you have a, a, a an eight hundred beacon score, you can get whatever the fuck you want. And my father you know, wasn't I, a country boy like that, but he would tell stories. They had a bar across the street from them. He's in Gloucester, New Jersey, which borders Camden, New Jersey, if you know that area. And um, uh, in the bar across the street from them, he would talk about how often there were murders. So yeah, that's a that's where he's from. Old school yeah. ghetto, and and so and I've ha I've made the same argument that you're making right now for the you know the Native Americans, but I've made it for other racial groups. I've been like, well, yeah, it's hard all over, right? I, I get that it's a little harder here, but there's also all these benefits over there. They got to at least balance out a little, right? Like, okay, maybe it's not fun being that being being one of those people, but is it really that much harder? Is it like ten percent harder, twenty percent? I think it's like maybe five percent harder. But for the Native Americans, I feel like it's like forty percent harder to to like become a become a Native American. Uh, I wouldn't. I won't say a if you did it by uh, like statistics, then like all the money those casino Indians have made would probably blow it all out of whack. Yeah, I I, I wonder. Um, oh, I had a point I was gonna say. Because like per capita, Indians are like the richest people on the planet or something. <laughs> you know, what the, in, in UNC, <laughs> they twenty thousand of them and like eighty billion in 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 cash. UNC Chapel Hill, they talk about how much money each major makes, right? 
Um, so like, you know, if you come out with an engineering degree, you make this, if you come out with a doctoral degree, you make that. I don't know if it's true, but the stat that keeps buzzing around here is by far geology is the highest paying uh, major in in UNC Chapel Hill. Really? They call it rocks for jocks, and all the basketball players leave with geology degrees. Michael Jordan has a geology degree, and, uh, <laughs> and you know, that guy makes like seventy million a year. And, uh, oh, rocks! Oh, I get it. Yeah. So I th that's I was that like, took me a second. You had me for a minute. I was like, No, I'm really? not joking. Th th no. But no, 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 you misunderstood. For a moment, I thought ge that that actual geologists were being paid very well. Yeah, that's not the thing. That's not the thing. <laughs> no, guys who guys who are going to end up being professional athletes often are geology majors, and therefore geology majors are on average paid more. That's right. That's right. <laughs> the, the 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 pro athletes that come out of UNC have uh, uh, broke the curve for um for geology as a major. Rocks for jocks. Rocks I get for it. Jocks, okay. yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. So uh, that, anyway, that somehow that tied into the Indian casino owners making Indians very wealthy per capita. When in reality, there's like, uh, I don't know, yeah. 150,000 yeah, Indians. Yeah, there's like 11 of them like that have $10 billion. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And I, I feel like, and you know, there's a bit to be said about that. You know, I feel like if they were, you know, they've got all that money, it seems like they could enrich their communities with that more maybe i don't know I, I feel like we're all a little bit ignorant on the subject but i i, I, I honestly feel already. like yeah right i honestly feel <laughs> just like just a they, little ignorant <laughs> <laughs> well i think that you are this extra is, ignorant on the subject of ignorance you know. going across people's screens i i, I yeah, think this. we're going to get educated people are going to reach out to us and support one position or the other. So people are going to say, Woody, yeah. I've been there. I've lived it. You're totally right. These people are just not achievers. Or they're going to say, Woody, I've been there. I've lived it. You don't understand. There are. It's a systematic uh, suppression of, of these people and uh, it, you know, through My no fault of their own. My brother applied for a student loan. They shot him. Like <laughs> if you apply for a student loan as a Native American Indian, you have a huge advantage, you know, or scholarship, right? There are lots out there that just help you. If you want to get accepted into a school as a Native American, that helps you out a ton. It's very um, fashionable to, uh, <laughs> to be Native American. Uh, Everybody, a lot of white girls of out there who are very proud of their 186th Cherokee, you know? Have you noticed that? <laughs> oh, hey, right here, buddy. girls out there, like, one, holding onto that train. Are you 116th Cherokee? Oh, yeah, 116th, yeah, don't, totally. Don't feed me that shit. Yeah, if you're not totally you're yeah. at least a quarter, then you're not really there. Can you give no, me a no. battle cry like to prove it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it, it, my uh, it was. My great great grandmother was Cher was part Cherokee Indian. Battle cry. Like that. Yeah, I, I don't even know what that would be. You should. You're I'd you know over four percent Indian. I've probably got more. Um, um, Lefty was the one who was uh, a large percentage An Indian. Eighth, I think. Oh my! Yeah. Huh. Well, you would think you would think you'd know more about like uh, you know maybe that's why I was such a bad contract negotiator. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I really enjoyed that. <laughs> oh no! And now he's living in complete poverty over there. <laughs> oh, oh, I just made oh, that. That's a good one. Oh, that, oh that's right, I'm drink. the bad one. That was a tasty drink that finished real bitter. <laughs> uh, <laughs> New topic. Oh, I didn't like yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that never happened. That never happened. Uh, um, oh, I had a topic. It was my backup topic in case you didn't want to talk girlfriends. <laughs> oh, 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 here you go. It's a would you rather. Silly topic. Um, would you rather be the 200th ranked golfer in the world or the number one Christian rapper? 200th ranked golfer. Wait, what oh. number is the golfer again? 200. The 200th ranked golfer in the world or the number one Christian rapper? 200. Definitely the best Christian rapper. Yeah, like he would make way more money. Yeah, to clarify, we're not way talking about the number one rapper who happens to be Christian. We're talking about the number one in the Christian hip hop genre. Why don't you look genre. up yeah. find who that is, see how much money they're making? Because I promise you, you'd be a cool motherfucker if you were top two hundred in golf in the world. You could you could totally get uh, lots of jobs as like a golf pro. Um, you know, you could you could get, probably get a job as a pro's caddy. You could earn a real living, like a respectable living for sure with your or, golf. You could just rap the Ten Commandments to a bunch of people at their weekly fantasy meetings and make a ton of money. <laughs> 
I, I, from what I'm told, I don't know about Christian rappers, but um, Christian rock is like a, a, it sells more than you'd guess. That the, the, the fan base in, in Christian rock is really passionate and they will enthusiastically buy everything you put out because you are their people. And Think about it this mm-hmm. way. Who's going to pirate a song called Praise Be to Jesus? <laughs> They're going to buy your disc. No one does that shit anymore except for Christian rock fans or you know Christian fans in general, you know, you're you're into Christian music, you're not going to pirate yeah. that. You're not going to you're not going to download it, copy it, just watch it on online somewhere, Spotify it. Like you don't understand all those complicated things. You're into Christian rock. Yeah. I never a, pirated music. You need a cassette and tape. as a Christian rocker or Christian rapper, you have plausible deniability for anything you do in your life. If you're a golfer and you go out and you bang a bunch of chicks, like Tiger Woods did, it's going to come up. People are going to know, even if it's not to the same extent as Tiger Woods. If you're a Christian rapper, you can do whatever you want, and as long as you come out and say, I'm so sorry, I slept with those three <laughs> prostitutes in Taiwan, they did all that coke off of that dude's butthole, uh, that was just an experiment, I, I prayed that about it. Satan. That and was just I Satan. I think uh, I'm on, on the right out. path now. They're going to be like, what, that's great. It's a great tale of redemption. Yeah, you could have a whole rap song, uh, you know, about fighting Satan off. Yeah, that would was- Back. You know, Satan had me in a corner blowing dudes for coke, and you know, <laughs> that'd be part of the rap song. It'd be yeah. great. I'd like to. Yeah. I think I think the three of us should should do some sort of a uh, maybe Chiz as well should, should should do a musical number. I'd like to see some. I'd like to do something like that. Rap battle. Should, um, you know, I don't I, really have any musical ability at all. I, I, that's why I think there should be a chorus situation where you know we. Uh, we I'm we incredible have, at rapping. You're just terrible at everything. Both <laughs> I know. I have <laughs> I have competed situation. in rap battles before, and I do quite well. I beat Chiz. You you also won a dancing competition. <laughs> you beat Chiz and what? I we, we um on the Woodycraft like team speak. Uh, the, the admins and the players all got together and had a rap battle, and um, yeah, I don't mean to brag, but I was fucking awesome. I. Oh, I remember that now. I remember that. That's been a while. Mm-hmm. About a less than a year, but yeah, a little while. Yeah, yeah, I remember that now. It's 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 been a bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember both of your performances, but I I remember they were both very awkward, <laughs> <laughs> pretty cringy. Um, I I mean I I hear where you're going, right? You're putting me down. You're kind of changing the topic from the fact that I just dropped a gauntlet. I have challenged you both to rap battles. And the fans will see this, and they will know that you're a rap dodger. <clears throat> um, are, uh, me and Chiz were talking about this the other night, actually. Are there any? What are the songs? Uh, I guess both of you who uh, that you know inside and out, like backwards and forwards, that you can just like reel off all the lines to. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Bam. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's, I think we all know that one. We do. There, there aren't any like pop songs or rap songs. You just like, you know, you know them like Inside and Out. Um, Inside and Out, really, I, I do weak. Like, there are some songs like uh, Frozen or no, no, what is it called? Uh, let it, let it go, mm-hmm. right? That I think I know every word to. But if you remove the vocals and told me to just sing to the music, I, I would find out that I didn't. What about you, uh, Taylor? Any songs you know Inside and Out? Uh, not really, actually. It's kind of the same situation where I'll feel like I know it, and then I'll start trying to, like, mouth the words or something, and it's like, oh, very quickly I find out I don't know any of these until someone's, like, said it an eighth of a second before me when I'm listening, <laughs> you know? Kyle, how about you? Do you? It sounds like you know this. Yeah, the words. I brought it up because, like, we were, I, there's a bunch of them I felt like I knew. Um, uh, the, um, the Bloodhound Gang song, what's it called? Um, <clears throat> it's like, um... Sweat, baby, sweat. Uh, sex is a Texas drought. Me oh, and animals. Kind of things that only Prince would sing about. So put your hands down my pants, and I'll bet you'll feel nuts. Yes, I'm Siskel. Yes, I'm Ebert, and you're getting two thumbs up. You've had enough of two hand touch. You want it rough. You're out of bounds. I want you smothered. I want you covered like my Waffle House or brown, hash browns. Ah, oh, I don't know the rest. Yeah, that was pretty good though. That was I pretty mean, good. We're gonna have never reach an apex. Like, just like Coca, just like Coca-Cola stock, you are inclined to make me rise an hour early. Just like they like savings time. You and me, and then it's the chorus. You know, with that but kind of just, talent, I'm surprised you're dodging me. Uh, we can throw down if that's what has to be done. Next week? How, um, what are the rules for this? Like, is there is there a beat? Or is there music? Like, like, what are we doing here? 
I think we can choose a beat. I think we should do the same one. I'll find some sort of copyright free beat like I did for the PKA intro, right? Something like that. And uh, we'll prepare a few lines. People like I want to actually. <laughs> People like a straight up freestyle rap that's off the top of your head. But um, let me prepare something because I'll you'll get a better performance. It, it just it it won't be sure. good at all. And um, yeah, we'll lay out a beat and uh, we'll do a little rap battle. See who's who. Okay, that'll be fun. <laughs> all right, I'm psyched. And uh, next week, if you come unprepared, I won't, and you'll get your ass kicked. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be fun cool. to do the ones where like they go super fast, but like, but like help myself with the the helium tank. Of course, you just have that there still. <laughs> you don't have a helium tank. I don't. No. I should get a sulfur dioxide tank and do the do the devil voice. That would be epic. Then I could do the helium voice, and you. That's how we could rap. <laughs> sweat, baby, sweat. Gotta go and like a Texas drop me and you do the things, the kind of, kind of things, the lonely prince with single pants. So put your hands on my hands, so let me fetch your film nuts. There's some physical reaction media when you're getting two thumbs up. I really like the, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I really like the helium tank. This thing wasn't expensive at all. And it's just, it's just a lot of fun. I've had more fun with like this $30 helium tank than I have with a lot of uh, more expensive toys I've got. <laughs> I was waiting and to see where that going. went. I've had this for a while. You were waiting what? I, I've had more fun with this $30 helium tank then, and I'm like, I can't wait for what's next. It's <laughs> <laughs> some of the more expensive toys that I have. Yeah. All right. Hmm. Do you have a new topic for us over there? I've got a crazy pistol I'm looking at over here that I, that I really want. Shoot it. All right. Let me find the... Uh... Have you guys opened the new Xboxes at all? Um, no, like I have anything with them. Mm -mm. Um, I guess we should. I, I guess I'm going to make a new gamer tag since somebody decided to get my last one banned or whatever. Really? For like, what for? Um, it said it was some sort of like sexual misconduct. So somebody must have like called into Xbox and told some lies about me because like, how do you? Oh yeah, all those lies. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I don't even wear. A, I don't even talk to people obviously when I play because I just pull that wire. I don't have a chat cable. So like it's impossible for that to even be possible. Um, so like it's just bullshit, and they banned. And this has been a while back, and they, they banned my account to like. Oh, maybe Major Nelson can help with this. Yeah, yeah. Whenever <laughs> I talk to fucking Major Nelson, I'm gonna mention this fucking because my O F P S co O my, my my the one with the gamer score on it, like twenty thousand gamer score or something. It's banned to the year ten thousand. I had yeah, that happen to me. Really? It actually says that banned until the yeah. year ten thousand. It's actually banned to the year nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine on December thirty first at midnight. Then yeah. Oh, well, that's not as bad. The, yeah. Mine was similar. They banned it for nine hundred ninety nine years, the Woody's Gamer Tag account, and uh, I ended up doing like a Twitter campaign to um, a guy, I think his name was Step Two or Two Step Two, I think, who was the head of Microsoft account security or something like that. It was some sort of chief security architect. And uh, he was really mad at me. He's like, this right here is a violation of terms. You are leading some sort of like hate campaign. And I'm like, man, I am not. I, I just can't get help through the regular support lines. Um, I, I've been attacked and I, I'm a grown up. I use this account to make my living. It's like part of my branding. I can't just start over. This is not a regular situation. And I desperately need your help. And then he begrudgingly fixed it for me, and the story ends there. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. It's, it's good that you actually got it fixed. It was. This is the people who know all my stories. This was when Cosmo took my gamer tank. Yeah. Cosmo's friend. I'll never forget. He's like, talk to me over AIM. So I talked to Cosmo and his friend, who I don't remember his name. And uh, Cosmo was kind of reasonable in like listening. And I would be like, you know what have I done? Like, is there something I did that offended you? You know, how can we make this better? Is there some sort of win-win? Like, what are you looking for, you know, in exchange for me to get this gamer tag back? And he said, and I'll never forget this, your breath smells like cum. <laughs> 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 oh my God. I, I, I don't know that we can recover from this. <laughs> you, know, like, you don't see, like, as nice as I'm being. No, that's like a one-off friendship ending insult. Yeah, it, it's yeah, like, all right. Well, I'm glad we're on the same page now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, that that sucks. Yeah. So I should have told him, but all my friends are happy. Radar. 
Hmm. Hmm. Huh. Uh, oh, oh, here oh. is Kyle. Go ahead. I think we need to do the last ad read. Oh yes. I'm sure everyone's excited about this. Let me uh let me pull up my it's Dollar Shave Club once again. I just wanted to read a few more words here. I've got about mm -hmm. Dollar Shave Club. We appreciate them being a, some being fervor a... this time. Oh, last time didn't have any fervor. Yeah, not enough. Was, I noticed a distinct lack of no, fervor. No, no, no. <clears throat> there was a lot of. Fervor there was a very distinct that, lack of fervor. Very <laughs> you know, low in the fervor count because exactly. you even said yourself they have very funny reads and you kind of you kind of bent it over a barrel and butchered it. Mm. There was so much goddamn free. fervor in there that people are gonna need fervor shots. Can you do like a character oh. voices or something? You know what? My daughter is now We're entering storytelling competitions. If you want, I bet I could get here to come in here and read this. I would love that. Really? Let let me pitch this to her and see if she's willing to do it. I bet she will. We'll see. All right, here. I, while he's doing that, I'll go first, and we'll see if she can do better. You can make it a bit of a competition. I like the way you're headed. Is there anything worse than buying razors? You gotta remember. Yeah. That you need them in the first place. You're not gonna remember that. You gotta sit in traffic to the store. You gotta find that locked fucking plastic fortress they keep them in. And then you gotta find the one guy with the key that's gonna open this thing up. Why are they even locking them up? He's in the back texting his girlfriend, not paying attention. It takes forever to even get your hands on the things inside the store. And then they charge $25. We'll never do it again. Join DollarShaveClub.com. For a few bucks a month, DollarShaveClub.com delivers great razors right to your door. DollarShaveClub.com is so much smarter than going to the store. Their plans start at just $3 a month. Signing up takes just two minutes. Then you sit back and the blades arrive like clockwork. You can shave with a fresh blade every week. No membership fee, no commitment, and they have a money-back guarantee. You have nothing to lose by trying them out. Stop trudging to the store for overpriced razors. Stop wasting your money. Join DollarShaveClub.com uh, slash PKA. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash PKA. Right. What is it, Kyle? dollarshaveclub.com slash PKA. I heard that. At least the tail end Excellent. of it. I heard him stumble a bit. And it's like while well, he started with some fervor, the fervor quickly tapered out, didn't it? Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Fervor. All right. Take a minute. It goes from this highlighted yellow thing to the bottom. Okay. And you can, you know, practice your reading like Kyle did. Get a little a grip on it. Uh, like, go ahead. Oh. With or without the mic? Uh, with with the mic, of course. You, do you need to drop the? Re she was like ready for bed. She's in like pajamas and retainers. In. <laughs> um, I can still outread him with my retainer on. Yeah, well, I no. just heard I can still outlead him <laughs> with my retainer on. Why don't you come back with no? I don't want to hear about John or Steve Club. <laughs> John or Steve Club. Get our <laughs> oh, we're so red. All right, all right. Yeah, she'll come right back with no retainer on so she can lead properly. <laughs> she'll uh, be back. Kyle's so. second read was much more fervor-filled. Not the second half of it. It really tailored off when I, or tapered off when I got back. It's well, when he I, did mess up and said dot .clom, which they might remove the sponsorship because of that Kyle Nice. Well, <laughs> I, I apologize, but the reason I said clom was because... Um, so take a minute. Red to green or yellow to green. Do I have to do it with there the mic on? There was something distracting. How else on? would you do it? Without the mic on, so I sound even cooler when I say it the first time. I don't you know. You have to say it out loud the first time. Oh, you want to do a sample read unmiked? Yeah, like that. Oh, but this mic will. Pick Points it are up. deducted for however long it takes you before you start See, reading. See, they do this thing that they call talking to walls, where they do like live reads. So she wants to actually get like a second try. And in her, her second try okay, to be you your know first what? impression. Okay, okay. All right, so take a minute. You can read it in your head. She's going to whoop on Kyle. Kyle, did you turn your camera off? I bumped it and it turned off. It'll come back on in a minute. Uh, when you bump it again? <laughs> when I plug it back in. Ah. There is a sea of wires here. What's I'm that like aquarium noise? Oh no, what is my is Minecraft? That aquarium noise? Alien tanks and Holy shit, I've had Minecraft open this whole time. Oh, walk into <laughs> the uh, I'm going to get ripped on. The little I don't mermaid hear thing is appropriate then. Yes, but... yes. All right, all right. All right, do you need to practice read more? Nope. You okay. think you got it? Who's going to do it first, me or Kyle? Kyle already went. Oh, I yeah. didn't even get to like cheat in here, Kyle. You want to nope. give me a third try? 
No. No, I really don't. Okay. Cause... All right. Do you want the, which mic? Do you want them? I guess that mic's the easiest to use. You can't mess it up. All right. Okay. Uh, do you want my chair? No, I'd rather stand. Jesus Christ! Well, people have grown more facial hair since the end of the last read, so I guess it's poignant Thanks. again. I'm, you know, it's really appropriate that I'm doing it because obviously my facial hair is everywhere. Now that you're ready to go, let's hear it. He's on helium. All right, Hopi, <laughs> ready? Bring it. Is there anything worse than buying razors? You gotta remember that you need them in the first place. You gotta sit in traffic to the store. You gotta find them locked in that plastic fortress they keep them in. And then find the one guy with the key, and he's in the back texting his girlfriend. After all that, it's gonna set you back 25 bucks? Never do it again. Join the dollarshaveclub.com. For a few bucks a month, dollarshaveclub.com delivers great razors right to your door. Dollarshaveclub.com is so much smarter than going to the store. Their plans start at just three bucks a month. Signing takes just two minutes. Then sit back and the blades arrive like clockwork. And you can shave with a fresh blade every week. No membership fee, no commitment. And they have a money back guarantee. You have nothing to lose by trying them out. So stop trudging to the store for overpriced razors. Join dollarshaveclub.com slash PKA. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash PKA. All right. Taylor, who won? Oh, uh, it was close. Uh, I'm going to have to give it to Hope because she's younger and I'd feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> and because he actually pulled me out of practicing for the pieces that I'm doing in competition this weekend. For this. Oh, well, you did a good job then. Very good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I feel like with well. minimal prep, she at least equaled, uh, maybe surpassed what Kyle yeah. brought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kyle, I and give I you the most stupid parade doing it. Morning. Less believable though, because I don't think she shaves her face. <laughs> well, you can use razors in other places. You can shave wherever with them. Let's move. That's on. what's great about dollar yeah, shave razors. They're not specifically face razors. Anywhere we on the body. We should get Woody. Shaving. We should get Woody to right. shave like his Excellent. armpits. <laughs> He's just saying armpits, and I kind of agree. We should get Woody to shave his armpits, shave his legs, everything. Uh, that would be. I, I would like that. I'd, Woody, I'd like to see you. Yeah. I'd like to see you struggle through shaving one armpit with a really old shit razor. <laughs> Bloods <laughs> everywhere, and the other one, fresh Dollar Shave Club, right through the hair, <laughs> like it wasn't. Even... Oh, maybe if they were to get a full sponsorship, that would be the kind of thing we would do. They did get a full maybe. sponsorship. Did, did they? Get, I'm mixed yeah, up absolutely. on what the deal is. Yes, um, they they are a full show sponsor. The, we the oh, um, well, thank you, Dollar Shave Club. The um, I think we should get. I think it would be cool if we did an event, maybe where we got. Um, where I guess Woody wouldn't be able to be there, where somehow we shaved a, a, a lady's private parts with some Dollar Shave Club stuff. I'd like to make that happen. If only at my house with no cameras. Maybe we'll just do that, and, I'll, and, and then I'll be happy. <laughs> you can report on the event. Yeah, maybe so. So this went from a video idea to just something you want to do. Well, it went from video idea, that, that, and then I realized <laughs> that it, just, it just wasn't going to work. That's but, something Wings uh, used to do with his girl. I forget which one, but uh, but yeah. What? They, they did it to each other. Yeah. No, I want explicit detail. Tell me about this. What? Uh, I, I don't even know what to other. add. They used to groom each other's, um, you know, private parts. Groom like shave each other or groom like fucking monkeys <laughs> eating bugs out of it? Both. Shave. Like, that sounds gross. Mutual grooming. I, I wouldn't I've, try. Um, I want to do my own grooming down there. I don't want somebody else's haphazard hands. They don't nah, have to shave a nutsack. I, I've done both. Very fun. Very fun. Very fun to have someone else trimming you up down there, and it's very fun to to go in and trim them up a little bit. It's not my cup of tea, actually. That's not my kink. I get the straight razor out and make it a little dangerous. Yeah. That not seems like kink. a chore to me. That doesn't seem exciting at all. It seems yeah, like I, oh, twice the work. I feel like, you know, for me, that would be removing some of the mystery. Like, you know, I wipe her ass. Oh, well, do I have to? <laughs> like, I, I, you know, I, I would, I'm just, it's not my kink. There's a couple steps between shaving someone and wiping their butt. At least four. Couple. <laughs> yeah. There are four, at least. Yeah, four. That I would not be into. It's like, hey, honey, I just went. You want to <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> get that one wipe Charlie out? <laughs> Be my Charlie. Go to town. Well, her new manicure would not puncture the one wipe Charlie. It's not impenetrable. A mm. not a yeah, werewolf could wipe their ass with a one yeah. wipe Charlie, no problems. You gotta cut it in half you with a bolt cutter before you flush it down. 
<laughs> Very werewolves. <laughs> I um I, I've I've spoken before about my great distaste for uh, Supernatural, and yet uh, I've seen every episode. I have started watching season ten now, so it is the tenth season of Supernatural that I will have watched, and I've already watched all the episodes that are available. I can't help it. I, I, I can't help it. I, I know it's a bad show. Um, I don't really even like it that much, but I keep watching. Hmm. I can't explain. Why do you it. do that? I don't know. It, 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 I, I really don't know. I like you, the character. You do really like it. You just don't want to admit it to yourself that you like it. I do because you feel like it's shitty I, and reflects I, it, poorly it, it, in your taste. It's poorly made. I wish it were made better. I like everything about it except for how it's executed in in a lot of ways. Like like it's a great idea. I like the I like the two guys. I like the all the actors virtually. I like the premise. I like the idea. I like the way that like every time there's a a, a female in the show, she's gorgeous. Like if there's a, if there's a if there's a girl vampire she's super hot if there's a girl werewolf werewolf super hot if like I don't know ghosts are in some lady's house extra super hot like every time like it's it's always like that so that's kind of fun and then these guys are always banging the chicks they always end up going to hell losing their soul becoming a demon you know witch will put them in a twilight zone in their dreams or, or something there's always like redheaded lesbians running around doing cosplay it's great it's it's a lot yeah of you're fun. right it doesn't sound good. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but when it comes to special effects, you know, I I only remember like one bit of CGI, and it's literally in the first episode, and it was just so poorly done. And then after that, it's mostly just regular people with either contact lenses or um, fake teeth, Halloween teeth. Yeah, and, awesome. a little, and a little CGI here and there to like make their eyes glow, like the angels have glowy eyes and shit like that. But for the most part, you know, the blood and gore is great. The blood and gore is great. But I, I I could use like some legit werewolves, vampires, ghosts, ghouls, goblins, that sort of thing. And I'm really getting sick and tired of like angels and demons. They've done it to death. Has HBO done anything good lately? Not sort that of I know Game of. Game of Thrones, right? And put that in. But then after that, I, yeah, I feel I like know. Boardwalk Empire is their second best thing. And we disagree on that. You think more like more highly of it than I do, but they just they don't have more going on. Oh, a lot of people Have like you guys True watched, Detective. Uh, it's not the same genre, but Veep. Have you guys watched Veep? Veep is actually really funny. I watched the first season of Veep. I don't know if I watched the second. And I found it um, funny-ish. Like, it was just TV quality. It wasn't an HBO show to me. Yeah, I thought it was good. I guess I really like that actress a lot. Yeah. Yeah, um, from, from Seinfeld. Mm-hmm. I, like, I like her, too. She's good. And yeah. she's she's one of those she's one of those actresses that has held up really well into her late forties or fifties or wherever she is now. Yep, so I agree with that. Very well. Yeah. Uh, oh, um, did we talk about Obama and ISPs and such yet? Did we cover that? Yep, I think we did. All right. Uh, um. Man's... So I want to show you this pistol that. Someone tweeted at me, but for some reason, oh, because I'm leaning on the keyboard. That's why it's doing that. Yeah, look at this thing. What do you have? Oh, he linked. He's linking a pistol that he wants. Oh, is this the thirty-five thousand dollar pistol? Yeah. I didn't see this. I, I just read a t- a topic title. Somebody tweeted it at me. I. Uh... It was on Gun It. Ah. Is Gun It? Yeah, that's what they call Reddit slash guns subreddit. Oh. Gun it. And uh, this does look like a nice pistol. You don't see these all the time. So it's a 1911. It has some sort of like meteorite grip on it. A tiger striped mm-hmm. etch on the slide. Damascus steel. Okay. Uh, they couldn't get Valerian steel, I guess. Um, Damascus steel is Valerian steel. <laughs> is it really? Yeah. And is it Valerian steel? I know I messed that up one time and everyone got it really is Valerian steel. What You called call it Targaryen steel, but oh. you got it right this time. All right. I'm catching on. Uh, is that gold or gold plating? Um, the grips are created from an ancient tooth of a woolly mammoth, by the way. Mm. Really? Necessary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hit a damn thing without my woolly mammoth tooth grips. I would love to have some woolly mammoth tooth grips. This looks like Elton John would have three of them strapped around his waist somewhere. These are very flamboyant guns. It's one gun, right? Yeah. Oh, I maybe. I don't know. It's just one of them. 
I yeah, it's one of, it looks one of a kind. Pictures. So this, you know, I love guns, but I don't even want this one. I guess, I mean, not that I wouldn't it, it's take so it. It's overdone. It looks almost cho- like childish or like a toy, you know, like it doesn't look, it doesn't have the look that a gun like that should, where it's like an essence of severity. Like, yeah, this is some serious shit. It's more like, oh, look at this cool, you know, special I don't know, fucking mammoth tusk or whatever the hell you said that was. I mean, I, I like envy that. guns that bring me stuff I can do more than guns that you know belong in a uh, like. I picture it. You know the YouTube Golden Play Button Award thing. It's like this really. It's it's like a four inch thick frame where you can put like something inside it. That's where this belongs in some sort of like four inch thick behind glass picture frame type thing. Uh, it's not something you take to the range and goof about with and blow up watermelons with, which is what I like to do with guns. Well, yeah. they make, they make some guns like that as well over here. This one is called the Jones Deluxe. It's a little bit less silly. Are you linking it? Just a little, little bit. Here we go. Whew. A little These bit. These are some less. incredibly expensive guns. How much is this one? Ten. Ten grand to go plinking with. I guess you would. Um, I don't beautiful. know. I, I, I like your AK-47 more. Although it is beautiful. I like it a lot. Yeah, yeah. I like the picture of like a guy looking like he's an extra from the Sopranos just holding it in his leather jacket at the bottom of the gallery. I think that's... Just so uh, out of place. That's your Montaigne. <laughs> that's the actor. Is it? Yeah. What did he act in? I, oh. Tons of movies. Yeah, I recognize him. I, I mean, yeah, he's acting like this is a reasonable purchase. <laughs> 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 That's pretty good. <sighs> it's totally not a reasonable purchase, but I mean, you know, I got some, <laughs> guns. Guns get a little expensive sometimes, and and these are fancy guns. Here's an here's this one's called the National Standard. Do you notice on there it had, like, the name of the Master Damascus Steel Craftsman? Like, at what point in his life did he decide, you know, fuck law school, fuck getting a job <laughs> in business or something, I'm going to become a Master Steel Craftsman. Like, or not even steel, a specialty kind of steel that nobody uses because it looks kind of fruity. Like, uh, what happened there? <laughs> <laughs> it's not that it looks kind of fruity. It's kind of a lost skill. They fold the steel... A lot. It's like hundreds. Well, of yeah, but some times. skills are lost for a reason. There's no professional butter churners out there. <laughs> I think the Damascus steel process was originally lost because they killed all the people who knew how to do it or something. These berets are a little itchy, right? Yeah, yeah right. Take them off. It's because yeah, it's, it's only seventy percent wool and thirty percent, you know, child labor tears or whatever the hell the rest of this is made from. <laughs> oh, good me. All right, let's yeah, see. Man, Taylor's hair. Off. Oh, I got a beret line too. That's that's fucked up. I don't I don't I don't approve of this. Yeah, yeah. I um, it's the first time I first time I ever worn a beret. Might might be the last. Um, <laughs> it's just really yeah, a bag, right? Like like I feel size. like I feel like it's a bag, really. I, I mean, think I there's could... a front to this, and I didn't quite tool that out when I put it on. I don't think there is a front. I think it's just. Oh, Maybe that's it's my mistake. It's twenty percent it. wool, eighty percent acrylic. <laughs> what does that even mean? So, like, what <laughs> nails are made out of? <laughs> <laughs> it's wool and acrylic. It couldn't be any itchier unless we added fleas. Yeah, or fiber. I was, I was thinking I was the only one. You said that, Kyle, because that was awful. <laughs> they had the itchiness. <laughs> no, I, kept, I was. Just, I didn't even say anything. I kept like scratching. I think <laughs> I they noticed him. me. Woody was like, these are a little itchy, right? <laughs> I was, uh, was going to wear mine until till somebody fucking said something. But yeah. You know? It's totally not my idea to wear the berets. It was Kyle, my idea to wear the berets. I was I've like, been, we I, all got to wear berets this week. I'm like, oh, yeah. okay. We got the berets, we got to wear the berets. And I love that. Hey, well, we made it through over three hours of berets. <laughs> yeah, good. Hours. You guys got three hours of berets. That's, that's plenty of berets. That's time. some solid beret action right there. You know, is there a dumber hat? No, well, I think, no, I think, think about wears this. pretty silly. I uh, oh, I did notice Chiz's hat when he was on the show. Mm-hmm. Hilarious, unless he's <laughs> as a joke. Come on, kid, take the hat off. Nah, he likes that hat. I, he loves that hat, and he has a when full head of good hair. 
Yeah, when I picked him up at the airport, he's wearing well, it. Well, he's not stalking murderers in the 30s. Just take it off. <laughs> you look ridiculous. Uh, uh, I know he's going to send a text about that. So <laughs> is Chiz's hat the silliest? It beats Beret? Is there a sillier hat? Like a fedora? No, no, it doesn't beat Beret. I feel like fedoras are actually really cool. It's just that the wrong people are owning it. Right, like if if all the high school jocks and quarterbacks and stuff were rocking fedoras, and then like you know the, the fat kid that like Dungeons and Dragons rocked it, and everyone was like, I don't know if you can pull off a fedora, then that would be one thing. But it's the flip; it's the inverse of that. All the Dungeons and Dragons fanatics are the guys wearing the fedoras, and the cool kids aren't. But fedoras are actually really cool. Just the the trendsetters aren't the ones that brought it back. I can see how it would look cool in some of those, you know, older movies, but it's such a timepiece thing that you just look like a hipster dick if you try and wear one. I, but the problem is that hipster dicks are the guys wearing it, right? Like, I, I feel yeah. like if you were to wear that Lost Boys trench coat, probably people don't know that movie, but, you know, <laughs> the, the, like the cool trench coat and, like, a fedora and such, you'd be like, if that was a look that, like, the, 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 the trendsetters brought back, Taylor looks so handsome yeah. in that frozen that smile. that big duster. <laughs> then, uh, I, yeah, a duster would be cool. I like dusters. I I can't wear when one. Tombstone, I... When Tombstone came out, my grandma thought that was gonna, she's going to be. Everybody's going to be wearing those dusters. Turned <laughs> out, mostly just school shooters. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, one demographic that a lot of people didn't want to imitate. So there you go, ruined yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. Like fedoras. Totally so. mafia. So, so, so go on. Yamakas are pretty silly. It's like barely Ooh. even a hat. You have to keep it clipped on. I think yarmulkes are sillier than berets or Chiz's hat. Not it's to just knock it's not a whole a religion and race. Hat. It's yeah. like it's so little that it's it's barely even qualifies. It, it, and are Jewish people prone to that male pattern baldness that the yarmulke handles so perfectly? Like that. <laughs> yeah, that's why they wear it. Yeah, there's your elderly mind thinking of you know just sparsing and piecing things together. <laughs> Uh, maybe, maybe that's so. Christoph right. Waltz, uh, our favorite actor from uh, Django and Inglorious Bastards, you know the Jew hunter. And, oh uh, yes, I like him a lot. Uh, he, the he's um, apparently he's one. Please don't tell months? me he's dead. <sighs> no, he's uh, he's going to be in the next James Bond movie. He will play a oh. significant role in the untitled Bond twenty four movie that will begin filming early next month. However, uh, I'm told that uh, that the part is a complex one. It's not immediately evident. Whether the part's friend or foe or a bit of both, the person who has knowledge of the screenplay told me. That there sounds interesting. He'd be a. I really like him. He can make any movie good. Mm -hmm. I haven't watched James Bond stuff in a while. Really? What the new James Bond stuff's good? I, I think. I can't argue against you. I haven't seen it. I, I did, but the semi-old James Bond stuff. If you go back like ten years, I feel like it just became like a dumb sort of product placement bad movie yeah, the the older pierce brosnan bonds were really bad and it wasn't pierce's fault it was the studio's fault but the um the new the daniel craig ones you're telling me you haven't seen casino royale where he goes i have not seen casino royale but skyfall is good you gotta see casino royale that's the beginning that's how he st be all right so most james bond movies it wouldn't matter if you saw him before you know what order you watched him in mm -hmm. but with casino royale it starts the tale of james bond he's not an agent when the movie starts you know like like I didn't know um, any of this. It's excellent. It's very good. And the action, the action's very good. It's not that bullshit where he goes in and judo chops somebody in the shoulder and they just drop. When Daniel Craig gets in a fight with two guys in a stairwell and, and they've got knives, he comes out of it beaten to fuck and cut a few times, and they're both dead. But it's not like he's a superhero. He's just a, he's just a rough, tough commando. Dude, hmm. so next movie night, Planet of the Apes 2, whatever that's called. Yeah. Then that right, maybe. The then Casino Royale. I watch Casino Royale. I love it. And it, it's it. There's a whole poker thing where and you know the, the 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 there's two or three gorgeous fucking naked chicks in there. I don't know if they get naked. Eva Green's in there. She's one of my favorite. Like I think Eva Green is one of the best looking women in the world. She's been in a. She does full frontal nudity. Like mm. um, she's she was in um she was in a movie recently. Oh, she was in the new Sin City, which was shit. Um, it's called a oh, Dame. Oh, awful. Four. She is the dame to kill for, um, and um, she was in um, Kingdom of Heaven, I think. Uh, she's just gorgeous. Gre she's green eyes and like big, just shaped really well, just big tits and just gorgeous, fucking smoking hot lady. Um, 
I don't know how I got on her, but yeah, the new James Bond will be good. You've never been on her, don't lie. Uh, no, not at all, I wish. <laughs> Wait, so, so movie this week is James Bond, or it's uh, Planet of the Apes 2? Rise of the Planet of the Apes, the, the second, the, the, the latest and greatest in the Planet of the Apes movies. That is our next film Maybe to watch. we can do two this week. I'm always up for two movies. Yeah, I, I might be talking smack here. I know that this week as we do this, like between PKAs, is also the week that I settle on my new house. So it, it I might be less available than normal. But uh, mm. Or maybe we could do two this week. We'll try. Yeah. Chiz and I have been playing um, Civ. Civilization, the, uh, the <sighs> new one that's in outer space. And I know you're not interested at all, but... No, no, I'm not, I didn't mean to cut, shut it down as a topic. I, I, I feel a great sense of relief when you two are playing together, and I'm not pressured to play that game with you. Yeah, so we're looking for a third player, um, anybody out there. We'd like somebody who's... Who, we don't want anybody better than us. We just want an average player. We, we, I, I feel like that's where we are. You know, we play a few games a week, but we're not reading strategy guides. I, I think it'd be good to have a third or fourth player, but we've been having fun with it. it I don't think it's as... I don't think it's as good as the last game. Would you like to have a guy... Like, sometimes you run across people who are awesome, and the challenge is they're not really same team, right? Like, you and Chiz, if you're playing against hard AI, will start benefiting each other and almost teaming up on the AI. Mm -hmm. And when you bring in an ace, like, I don't know what voodoo they perform to get so far ahead on a tech tree. Build order. I'm sorry? The correct build order. So instead of being... You know, your city's making like five science right now, so it doesn't make sense to research something that takes 5,000. You have to know the, the most efficient order to do everything to get to a certain goal. There's a time and when it's correct. To, you need a certain amount of hammers per turn before it's, it's most efficient to start building that building based on the... And, what and you're right, and I knew that, but sometimes I feel like, you know, I've been making some pretty good decisions this game, right? Oh, so yeah. far... I feel like I, you know, I haven't wasted any turns in any city. And then a, some guy else will be twice what I am. And it's like, I, like I could have fathomed 10% better because I thought I was perfect, but there's always room for improvement. But how is he on a whole nother level by now? Why am I riding horses and he's flying planes? Like, how did that it just... Some people are just a lot better. It's a lot of things, and 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 we don't always understand it ourselves. Like people will double our scores and stuff. Um, we played against the AI the other night on hard, and we just put two people on our team and one on his, and it was still a handful. Like it still took us eight hours to beat it. Now I think if we'd made it our mission to beat it as fast as possible, that would have it wouldn't have taken eight hours, but it did take eight hours in the <laughs> end. It was really frustrating. Some of the new units in the game I like a lot. The abilities, because it is so super space age and futuristic, then you know the early units are fun to play with. It's like in the in the last game you're starting off with like guys with swords and 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 bows. In this game you're starting off with machine guns. That's but the you first were telling thing. me that your style in particular is not effective in the new game. Oh, actually, it, I think it is. Um, there's okay. a. I, I I would say by like turn. By like turn seventy five, I can produce a pretty fucking effective army that you wouldn't be able to deal for, with. For people that don't know, um, Kyle has a it, Kyle's style is he likes to build some like combat units and fight fast. That's his thing. Mine's always the opposite. I like to build a couple cities. They're almost all undefended, and I'm hoping no one messes with me for fifty turns or so, so I can get my my act together and play wide. Colin, not Colin. Kyle plays tall. And uh, and he likes to fight soon. Yeah, I like to get. I like to find a, an avenue, a build order. And in this game, and, and once again, I'm a, I'm a noob at this game. But what's been effective for me, if if that's what I'm doing, is that there's a unit called CNDRs, which are like giant fucking death robots, basically, and they're pretty easy to get to. Um, and if you've got enough production to crank one out every three or four turns, you only need like one of them hits a city and it takes like half its health away if you haven't put a lot of improvements in that city. In the last game, it seemed like you could build a wall around your city and that was like, and then maybe like one other thing to increase the hit points it had. And then beyond that, you just had to have units to, to make your city stronger. But this game, it seems like every 50 turns, there's a new couple of buildings that you can put in your in your building, in your city to make it more resistant to attack. And uh, How many and people are in the game? As many as you want, or as few as you want. Like I think, I think you can do like. You, you, I'm sure you can do eight player multiplayer. I think. Um, 
but you can do lots of uh, AIs in addition to that. And some of the worlds, some of the maps are, are just huge. So you can, you can play for a long time if you want. We put everything on like the fastest turn rate and everything and try to keep our games to three or four hours if we can, but it's hard to. It takes a long time to, to really play the game out. But I like it. It's it's been fun so far. We've we've won a few and we've been beaten a few times. The AI is nasty in this game. You guys played the new COD yet? I haven't. Um, I've got my Xbox here, obviously. Uh, I guess I'll get it for that and and play a little. Uh, I think I'm gonna wait a little bit and and you know watch a few. I, I think I'm gonna do what I I'm on the opposite of the spectrum. I think I'm gonna watch some COD videos on YouTube and figure out you know, where to go on day one, because I don't know. And that, I've never been in that position before where I did. I wasn't a day one guy learning the stuff first and, you know, as I went, you know, and in real time. So this will be a little bit more interesting to start off with a clean slate and be like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to use the M16 with the red dot, and I'm going to always use dead, you know, dead silence. The, this is what I want to do. Nobody's the the new think... double jump thing is great. The double jump, like, it lets you dodge so much more. I've been playing infected mode. Where like obviously you know one person starts as the zombie and you have to try and kill everyone in it, like it it's unlike the other Call of Duties where in survival mode like when you were the last guy you were fucked. There's mm-hmm. nothing you can do, nothing at all. With this like you can jump, double jump, boost around, like you can boost forward or back, throw people off the trail, and so like there are times where like you're running around and you can survive for like an extra minute just by boosting around as there's like 12 people chasing you or 11 or whatever. So I I actually like it a lot so far, but I've only played it, you know, three and a half hours. So I'm sure there'll be plenty of time for me to hate it later. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I got it. Two things to say. One interesting thing about COD is it's doing really well right now in terms of public opinion. I want to say that um, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, the new one, got more hate in anticipation of it being bad than when it released. Right. And normally like everyone loves the game and then they get their hands on it and they're like, oh, lag compensation or, oh, this sucks or the maps are too big or too gray or too whatever. Like they love the game until they try it and then they start picking on all its flaws. This time they were, I guess, picking on its flaws, just saying like, oh, it'll probably suck. This franchise is dead. And then they get their hands on it and everyone's like, you know what? This is good. You know, it, it people have been really positive on the game, shockingly forward positive. And shout out to Sour Patch Adults, who I just quoted right there, stole his line. And um, uh, I had another thing to say, God. Oh, oh, I haven't noticed any YouTubers really crushing it. Like, uh, you know, I, I watch some of the people who I consider the best at the game. Um, there's uh, some guy got 90 some kills, I think. He's a, a new optic player. But he had like 40 or 50 deaths that game. So I was like, well, that's a lot of kills, but... It's not the kind of like 98 and 2 performances we'd see in previous CODs. Um, Mark of Jay's playing, you know, of course he's a super strong player. Sandy Ravage is a super strong player. But when I watch the games they're uploading, it's not like that, oh my God, how'd that happen? Like it seems like a really good game nowadays is, you know, more than 40 or 50 kills and a 3 to 1 KD. And if you do that, then you really stood out. Whereas in previous games, people would get a 40 or 50 KD. And. No one's pulling that off. So I don't. It, they used to blame it being random. They would say that like, oh, it's less skill based. They just they, who wins is random as opposed to who's more skilled, and that's why sometimes you die and it's just not your fault. And they meant to make it noob friendly, but no one's saying that. There, it just seems to be the way that it's working out. Like, I, it seems like now that you've, you're working in more three dimensional space with the character movement that. Mm-hmm. You know, there aren't. It seems like camping would be a, a bit harder. Like as far as like backing yourself into that little corner and like this is my little area. Now all of a sudden you got guys flying over walls. That you know, it's, yeah. it's hard to find a spot that's safe as a camper. It seems. And, like. and it seems like I can get back to your spot, right? Like if you kill me and send me back to my spawn in Modern Warfare Two, then I can't easily like get to you and flank around you and such. But with this, and I'm only watching this game, but I've seen enough videos that I, it feels like you can go anywhere you want on the map and, you know, take out that camper that got you. It's safer to move around because of all the options you have and how you fly, like it, the routes you can take and the dodging. Yeah, you're almost limiting yourself by not doing the double jump and maneuvering around. Now, Team Art says... Because people like how to predict different directions. 
Well, T Martin knows better than I do, so yeah, I don't know. I, I'm sorry. I jumped in, but it, it was actually just a robot thing. Like I didn't mean to interrupt. But um, oh, uh, oh, T Mart was saying he's like he's giving tips for new players, and he was like, "Don't jump too much." You know, it, like there's a temptation to constantly be on the jumping, the flying, etc. But I guess your mobility is somewhat limited. Like maybe once you propel in a direction, you can't just go back and forth. Or he's like, you, know, you got to play this thing like it was an old COD most of the time and use this extra ability sparingly. It and in my head, it translated to like doing this all the time. The the flying and the evading and such is a little bit like sprinting indoors. You know, it it, it as a broad stroke. In old CODs, it was a bad idea to sprint indoors. You know, you're going to sprint around corners and you're going to find yourself unable to join the gunfight. Right? He's be waiting for you and you'll have to do that sort of sprint delay on when you can bring your gun up. So um, maybe, you know, it's the same sort of dumb mistake. Like if you're always jumping around like that, you're not ready for the gunfight like a guy who's running around ready to fight. But yeah, someone's going to fuss that we don't know this game well enough to be talking about it. And I suppose they're on to something. But uh it's it's raised my curiosity whereas i wasn't it wasn't just not caring i was almost anti-caring like you know have you played the new cod fuck god man ghost <laughs> ruined it never again now i'm like huh not yet you know i'll have to check that out yeah i'm gonna play it there's just a few other things that i'm, I'm interested in playing right now the um we just wrapped up borderlands the prequel i don't think mm -hmm. any of us thought that was as great as um i hoped it would be uh, yeah Mm -hmm. um, and now the Halo Master Chief thing's gonna come out. I'm gonna play uh, a good bit of that with with Chiz. Definitely gonna play through the campaigns of. Uh, I've definitely played the campaign people, of. Is that single player the campaign? No, that's that's four player. Four I, oh player. wait, wait. I don't. Yeah, it, it should be. Yeah, it should be. I, I don't. I, see, my only thing is I know it's four player for like um, like Halo Three. I just don't know if it is for Halo Two. Hmm. I don't know about that, but I, I want to play the campaigns like you have. Oh, I love this Halo campaign. I'm interested in so seeing them. Good. Yeah, I feel like I'm, I, I feel like it's like I've never seen Star Wars. Like I'm missing a major piece of gaming history. The only one I played was ODST. Yeah, that's the shittiest of them. I've like, been told like, that. Yeah. The it's it's such a great story. It's so epic. Um, it, it's it, it's great. I really enjoy it. And the Master Chief character is really good. And um, Cortana is a great character. And then you know there's two or three supporting characters. It it really would make a great movie. I know we've beaten that into the like a dead horse before, but I would love to see the Halo movie, the Gears movie. Uh, I, re I really wish somebody would get on that. They made I a Halo movie, and it was good. That doesn't count. That, that That's not a real movie. Machinima made that thing. That doesn't count. Wait, are we talking about the same movie? Forward Unto Dawn? Machinima made that? I thought they did. They were promoting it heavily. Maybe they just got paid to promote it. I thought I it liked was a, it. I thought it was a property of theirs. Um, I, I I didn't watch it. I, I wanted I wanted the Peter Jackson movie. I don't, I don't want uh mm. any, some some low budget thing. Peter Jackson originally signed on to do the thing. They had a lot of the props and the stuff uh for the thing, and it ended up getting canceled. And then that director whose name I have a hard time pronouncing. It's like Peter M. Blanc. Night Blanc. Blanc. <laughs> no, no, I, I can I can say um, Shyamalan's name. It's it's <laughs> it's Blunk and Plunk or something. The guy who did District Nine. Okay. Um, District Nine is is full of recycled Halo movie props, mm. and uh, and I really liked that movie. And and one of the things I liked about that movie was was a lot of the guns and stuff like that. I really wish they'd made that Halo movie, uh, and made it all it could be, because it needs to be a trilogy. It's, That's how I feel movies. about um, the Last Airbender. Like the source material on that might be better than the source material on the Hobbit, or I mean to say, um, Lord, Lord of the Rings, Rings. and. Uh, or The Hobbit, for that matter. Because I, I think that source material was great. And the movie they made was good. Like, a lot of people say it sucked. But I think it just missed expectations. If they had gotten Peter Jackson to make that movie, it could have been incredible. Or um, I agree. Yeah. Who made the last Star Trek movies and he's making Star Wars now? Abrams or something? Yeah, J.J. Yeah, Abrams. Abrams. He, made the, he made the Star Trek movies as well. If he makes a movie, it usually turns out really well. Like, I'm glad that he's in charge of Star Wars. Hmm. And uh, there's a couple of Quentin Tarantino. So everything he makes is awesome. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see what J.J. Uh, Abrams does with Star Wars. The what is it? They they, they they said what the name was. The title, like the hope, um, the force, the force returns or something like that. I don't remember what it's called, but 
Uh, I got high hopes for that thing. I hope it's good. I hope I enjoy it. It's oh, I, I, like... don't, I don't want to talk about it, but that that movie you just saw is supposed to be incredible. Mm. Insurrection. What, what is it called? Um, Matt McConaughey's in it. Oh God, oh, it's so fucking good. Interstellar so fucking good. Was so it good? good? Oh, it's fe- one of the best movies I've ever seen. Oh, so good. No. Yes. Really? He's yes. not the only one saying that. It's supposed to be incredible. It, one of the best movies ever. It's as like um, mind prov- thought provoking as uh, Inception, and it's three hours long, and it's filmed amazingly, and it, it it's supposed to be super amazing good. I you have can, to see it. It's um so it's it's one of the way the way I watched it was on a seventy millimeter IMAX thing, um and in seventy millimeter I think the resolution equates something to like twenty k. So instead of like a 4K resolution is 4,000 uh, pixels, and this is 20, so five times better, something like that, because of the the film stock. And it's 70 millimeter. It looks so different than anything I'd ever seen before uh, on the IMAX screen. I really liked it. Uh, the special effects were great. McC- McConaughey was excellent. Uh, uh, all the supporting actors were really good. Michael Caine's in there. Matt Damon's in there. What's her name? Catwoman from the Batman movies. What's her name? Halle Berry. Anna- no, the no. good one. Uh, Anne Hathaway? There you go. Right. Anne Hathaway's in there. Um, and I'm trying to remember who else, but l- lots of good actors. The story is epic. The science of it is epic. Um, they deal with lots of complicated science, and they they, they make it easy to, for the layman to understand, I feel, at times. with. Um, I need to see this uh, movie. Robots in it are great. The artificial intelligence is great. The special effects are excellent. And there's... I cried, I think. Like, I cried twice in the movie for sure. <laughs> there was one part where so my heart gay. was. There was one part where my heart was literally racing. It was just like boom, 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 boom. I was like, oh shit, is he ex? Because there's there's lots of heart pounding moments, and this is a bit like Game of Thrones in that they're not afraid. You know, it's a dangerous world. People people might not make it. Some people don't. And and so like you're you're on the edge of your seat. You don't know what could happen. Uh, I, I really, really can't say how much I love this movie. I walked out of there just blown away. It hasn't happened in a while. So why were you crying in the middle of like an emotional thing? Or you were yeah. just openly yeah. weeping at how much you enjoyed the film? No, it was an emotional thing. It was a really sad moment in the movie. Um, Matthew McConaughey had to leave his daughter behind and uh, go on the space mission, and, and there was just this really emotional moment. And then there was another moment um, that I won't give a spoiler away, but later on there's another thing. Um, that's, that's sort of in the, in, in the same, um, from this, uh, something similar that was that where Matthew McConaughey cries and and I started crying too. I was like, oh, it's so fucking sad. Uh, it's uh, it's so good. I, I it's it's in my top ten movies. I, I I'm as excited after coming. I'm more excited after coming out of there than I was for Gravity, and I really enjoyed Gravity. But I think this is definitely definitely much better than Gravity. Uh, the scope of the story, the whole thing, the way they handled um, Casey Affleck's in there too. That was the other one I couldn't remember. Um, great movie. Can't say enough about it. Well, I'll see it if it was better than Gravity. I thought Gravity was a good movie, but I wasn't blown away, or I thought it was just entertaining but too long. Well, I th- I think the key to Gravity would be watching it in 3D. Like like I watched it in IMAX. I watched it in IMAX 3D as well, and. I, it was a movie that really lent itself well to that technology, and not many movies do. Uh, but if there's any movie I could name that you should watch in IMAX 3D, it, it would be Gravity. But there, there, I remember there's one scene where this, I think it's a Soyuz ca- capsule, the Russian like uh, landing capsule. Uh, it's got a parachute in it and all these parachute cords, and that's sort of, in an explosion in space, it's sort of like whipping around through the air, and Sandra Bullock's trying to like grab the cord so she doesn't float off into space. And in that moment with the 3D, the, the, the ropes are in your face. Like, they're out here, and the guy next to me was literally going like this. He was like, shit! Like, he's <laughs> trying to grab one. So, uh, that, that wow, was Wow, what an idiot you were watching the movie with. <laughs> <laughs> Did you bring Jeremy with you? <laughs> no, he was a stranger. <laughs> this, this random, this is strange black guy next to me, he was trying to grab the ropes, and I just remember thinking, like, I also had an impulse to grab at those ropes. It was some sort of uh, I did it as a response. kid when 3D was new. Like, it, 3D but wasn't even common in movies yet. But it was at Disney World, and I it, it, like there were a lot of people in the theater like giving it a shot. This is different. The new 3D is very, very good. It, it, it's, it's, it really, it's different than it used to be. Um, I always is it like the Hobbit 3D? Because the Hobbit had 
a good balance of 3D and not like trying yeah. to be like a whoa <laughs> kind of thing, you know? Because that's gravity, aggravating. Gravity was great with the 3D, but when they try and play it too much. Gravity's great with the 3D because you know you've got your astronaut and your in the in the foreground and in the background you've got something like Earth or a space station. So it really you know astronauts popping and being 3D as they float through space just makes sense. It's just it just looks better it, than than you know the Hobbit where like the characters are running along and they're kind of in 3D. You know it doesn't make as much sense. It does look good, but the effect that it has in space and in a space movie, for example, when like some uh, when the when the when there's an explosion in space and there's lots of like debris flying around and that's all in your face, it really makes the makes the scene because you get a an idea of just how insane this explosion is and it looks bigger and deeper and cooler than it normally would. I did, um, Interstellar was not in 3D; it was just 70 millimeter IMAX. And um, for anybody out there, you can you can look it up online to find out if there's a an IMAX theater near you that is showing in 70 millimeter, and I strongly recommend that you pay the twenty dollars per ticket and go watch the thing. It's totally worth it. Uh, it's like nothing I've ever done before. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. New topic? Yeah. All right. This might be the last topic. I don't know how long we've been running, but um, adults always say you'll understand when you get older. Now that we're adults, uh, even kind of murka, what? Don't they understand? What, what what have you learned now in your adulthood that uh, that you would tell younger people? I don't know. I'm just gonna look like a dick if I answer this one. I'm only 23. Like I'm gonna be like, oh, I've learned so much. Like, <laughs> I don't know. The there are people out what, there who are 16 years? who who would consider you in a completely different age group than them. Right, they're yeah. they're in. I would go, I, I would talk to myself about how to use hair product. <laughs> but this, oh, so let me go first as a like what I'm going for in this. No, as an example. Yeah. So it to me like it. Adults always say you'll understand when you get older. What don't I understand? To me, it's the life isn't fair. Right. It, 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 adults would tell me life isn't fair when I was a kid, and it was like, well, that's bullshit. Right. It, it's all of our obligations to make sure that life is fair that you know like if it's a situation you need to handle it fairly you know we're, we're here all to improve the world and make it a better place and and it's supposed to be fair and that's one of the things now i i, <laughs> I can't be bothered with that bullshit it, it, it's more like all right life isn't fair figure out the world and how to succeed in it it's not about changing the world that's a waste of time it's, it's tilting at windmills etc you know Maybe if you're president of the United States or something, I don't know. But by and large, your job is to like figure out the lay of the land and succeed in the world that you have, not in the world that you wish you had. Well, that's good. Pretty good advice. Obviously, you've had decades longer to ponder this than Kyle or I. <laughs> True. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kyle, what do you have? We'll go I, I, in descending order of relevance. <laughs> okay, I, I think I would go back and talk to myself about, um, definitely about my hair product. I feel like for a long time, if you go back and look at some FPS Russia videos, I, I really didn't know what was going on with my hair. Like, that wasn't a fashion state. That wasn't me trying to be like, yeah, the Russian guy wouldn't know what the fuck his hair should look like, right? Let's make it all crazy. Like, I just legitimately, <laughs> nobody ever sat me there and be like, all right, so you keep it about this short, you put a little bit of this stuff in there. You just get a little putty, you, you rub it in your hands, run it through there after you get out of the shower, and then you brush it how you want, mess it up a little bit, and it sticks. Then you don't end up looking like you got a bowl cut because you don't go in there and ask for a bowl cut. Your hair just grows in like that. That's how your hair looks when you don't have any product in it. That's how all of our hair would look. But nobody told me that. So I didn't have that going on until it took me a long time in life to, to realize how to, how to take care of my hair. To just and get a hold of basic hygiene, huh? It wasn't basic hygiene. I was very clear. This is advanced <laughs> hygiene we're dealing it's with advanced here. Advanced hygiene. This is yeah. hygiene 501. Yeah, Kyle's and, like, and adults told me when I was a kid, you should brush your teeth for more than 11 seconds at a time. <laughs> now I know why. <laughs> <laughs> that's Jeremy. Oh, that's... <laughs> oh. Yeah. Huh. Well, let me think. I guess the one thing... Well, no, that's answering a different question. Fuck. You'll understand huh. when you get older. Older generation of Reddit, what don't I understand? I guess the whole be yourself thing. 
Ooh. that I was told as a kid when mm-hmm. my your parents were like, well, well, just just be yourself, just do that. The reason they're giving you that is they don't hurt your view how you could change or need to change, and it's just like. A, I wonder what he's saying. Like a hundred percent. Like you have to put on a face. You have to put on a charade a little bit in the world. Not everybody. Oh, can you guys not hear me? I I, I think you're saying that um, you shouldn't always be who you're gonna be, but but you you've gotta you know you gotta put on. A you gotta have bit, different a masks voice. for different situations. You know, there's not just a be yourself and you know just be kooky and crazy all the time because that's who you are. You know, and it's not gonna make you friends. If you're being yourself and you don't have any friends, it's because yourself probably kind of sucks. And so you got to work on fixing things. Like, it seems like a way to just become contented with It where sounds you're like at you were currently. just a bit of an asshole. Could that have been the problem? It could have been. Very <laughs> much so. But it, could it, it, yeah. could, could it be that for most people, being yourself would be a great way to, to live your life? But for you in particular, you're just so rotten on the inside that being yourself just didn't work out well. I think you've cracked the case. Those extra four <laughs> years you have on me have, uh, you know, I'll, I'll mature by then. To okay, so understand what I'm saying now. Taylor's onto something, right? That it's like be yourself, but be the I don't know the best be version of you that's appropriate for the situation. You know, be yourself, but be your business self over here, and then be your you know respectful self over here, and then be your kind of crazy party self over here. Like it doesn't really mean anything. And I guess as a kid, I always thought like be yourself meant just like do whatever you want. You know, like just do whatever you want. Everything by virtue of the fact you're doing it is part of yourself. I, I probably lost you. I don't. I don't even know where I am currently. But I think I'm, I'm following. Trying to hash this through. I'm following. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm making a lot that of sense. Oh well, yeah. Not a good answer, but an answer. There and of course, have. there's dozens of like random things you pick up along the way that they don't teach you in in, in high school or or in everyday life necessarily. Like little little life hacks and stuff like that. The things that have shaved time off your lives. The you know all that stuff. Oh, please, you, you you seem to have some specific examples. Online bill paying. Like, like you know, basic stuff that I didn't know when I was 18. You know, little stuff, oh. like like ta- th- how to pay your fucking taxes. Hey, oh, you my know. God, I wish somebody had taught me that. Right? All that stuff. Um, I didn't you know. know online bill paying when I was 18 either. Yeah, it didn't exist yeah, when you were like, <laughs> your pen. There no, was no <laughs> line to get on. <laughs> Unless you count the telegraph. The uh, yeah. there's lots of stuff like that though. Like um, I wish one thing. I wish I could go back and let like I don't know. I think the sneakers that I was into when I was like 18 were lame. Like mm-hmm. uh, maybe my fashion sense. And although I'm rocking this dingy like monster sweatshirt because this is a lazy day. But like you know when I when I dress up and I go out, I feel like I've got pretty good fashion sense. I, I know how to dress myself. I know how to. I, how to make myself look okay. I'm missing casual shoes 18. right now. I could use help with that. I have some shoes that I wear when I go to like conferences and stuff. They're they're almost like kids for guys, and I think they're okay. I also have some brown shoes I used to wear at work, but I don't like them. I have running shoes, and I totally don't like that look. Um, I have hiking I like boots. La- and Yeah, I, I go back and forth a lot. I, I've got some... Let me grab these. I don't know how to describe them. They're kind of like kids. I like Kyle's approach of just simple, basic things from your childhood. Like, I wish I could go back and tell myself to not wear baggy pants. I looked like a dick. Wish I could go back <laughs> and version of me. You know, because you just look like you just look like sloppy this. and bad. I've got a few pair like this, like not necessarily orange and brown, but I've got like some that are like gray with like burgundy uh, strings, and they're like um, they're like. Can like cloth. I don't know how to describe this material, but it's yeah, like, like a thick cost canvas kind of thing. Like, like it's a really comfortable shoe if you can imagine. I like, think I have not. a shoe like that, but it, to me, it doesn't feel like an everyday shoe. It's mine's a little flimsier than yours, and uh, I think I'd like maybe something. These were closer. cheap. These were like G, it says GBX on the bottom. I don't know what that means, but I ordered them out off Amazon, three pair at a time. Um, hmm. I like them a lot. The I would, um, I would get mine like you, but. Jackie's sleeping, I'm sure, and it's kind of rude. And I've got um, I got some boots I got the other day that are like cat, like Caterpillar, uh, like mm-hmm. Bulldozer Company. They're made by them, and I really like those. Th- those have been like really, I don't know, they've been a good pair of boots, and they're comfortable. I have some warm. good American-made Red Wing boots uh, for for non-boot aficionados. They're good. I want to say they cost like hundred and seventy dollars. They're pretty old now. They're supposed to like last for life, and you can get them repaired by a cobbler and everything. 
But to me, they're overrated. I don't find them as comfortable as I wish they were. I have high-end work boots, and I'm just not that happy. Hmm. Yeah, I, like this. I like steel-toed boots, though. Oh, I don't like that too heavy. Oh, they're a big deal for me. You know what it is? It was woodworking. Um, there are a lot of situations where you're putting something heavy down, and uh, I, you can rest it on your foot, like your, your steel toe, and then, um, you know, just like now you only have an inch to fall and you can work the rest of it out. Like if you have a four by eight sheet of plywood, that's a, that's a lot of, I think they weigh like 90 pounds or something like that. You can carry it, you can do it, but you can't do it like with a lot of finesse unless you're unusually strong, but I can put a you know, sheet of plywood down on my steel toe boot and then gently work it to the next level. And that, that's why I like them. That makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, so that's that. Is a uh, wild card time? I'm trying to think if you want to cover anything else. I just <laughs> yeah, want to say wild again, card. Um, thanks to uh, Dollar Shave Club for sponsors tonight. Um, love them. And I, I, I have had the one wipe Charlie's before, but I'm going to renew my order now that you guys mentioned it because I too would like my asshole to be spot free and clean on mm. these cold winter nights. Yeah, I, I feel like. Um... So, so people give Americans, you know, a hard time saying that our butthole maintenance is not, uh, is not on par with the Europeans who often have bidets, but with the advent of one wipe Charlie's America, once again, is there amongst the butthole cleanliness leaders of the planet. Yeah. Back in the first world mm -hmm. in the rank. Yeah. So, all right. What? Well, hope you guys enjoyed the show. There it is. Painkiller ready. Episode 206. Good night.